Punching Up, a Nintendo podcast, is brought to you by you. If you want to learn how to support our show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 38 of Punching Up, Last Day Media's bi-weekly Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Brad Ellis, and joining me this week, of course, are my two co-hosts, Micah. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing very well, Brad. Cooked up some mean burgers last night on the grill because the weather is cooling down ever so slightly. So now this is peak grilling time for me. So uh, I'm very excited to be back out there again after a brief hiatus due to the hot weather. (laughs) <laughs> awesome and also of course gene park how you doing gene how's it going how's it going i am wear- wearing my glow in the dark zelda shirt colin's Ooh. favorite shirt um and i'm also wearing uh my pokemon uh, uh hat from hawaii Ooh. um because they had that they, they had their event there and uh our guests just came back from there uh mm-hmm. just like, like did. a couple months ago that's right. So, yeah, yeah, we have a guest. Is this the first guest ever on Punching Up? This is our up? first guest in Punching Up. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Holy moly. Yep. Yeah. We have Mr. Philly Beats You, YouTuber. Got a lot of great stuff up on there. I checked your channel out recently. A lot of great guides and everything like that. Uh, Phil, before we get into, if the audience doesn't know you, why don't you just tell them about yourself real quick? All right. Uh, well, I'm Philly Beats You. I make a bunch of uh, tips and tricks videos on my channel uh, from Pokemon all the way to Zelda and who knows maybe we might expand further into the Nintendo verse as time keeps going on um, and just like making a bunch of entertaining videos as well on the channel so that's that's the basics of me when when did you start how'd you get started Ooh, I started a, a while it's, it's ago always a, it's always an interesting question for content creators it is. it's always <laughs> like a different story right it is we come in at weird times I think it yeah. was like back it was 3ds era uh sun and moon Sun and Moon is where I Ooh. stepped in. I started seeing things online. I started talking about it. And that's when I jumped into the whole um, Pokemon thing. Because I'm like, wait, I, I didn't realize I could play Pokemon and make money on YouTube doing that. And then I was like, hold on. We need to drop medical school for Pokemon. As time went on, I, <laughs> I, I, you're in. I just dropped it. And I said, you know what? We're going full sale on Pokemon. Yo, so you was, dropped on a medical school? That's, that's amazing. I took all the debt with me. I'm like, this is my passion. I'm coming to YouTube. And yeah. I mean, Pokemon saved my life. <laughs> yeah, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. Great. Uh, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it, man. Very excited to have you on here. Here's our first guest. Uh, we got a quick warm up, couple warm up questions though, right here. And this one's for you first, Philly. Okay. This is from Plus Ryan. Welcome. Philly beats you. I never heard of you, but from a quick check of your YouTube channel, I'm excited to see you're a Pokemon enthusiast. Couple of questions for you. What's your personal favorite Pokemon generation and which game or games would you recommend to someone who's not already a fan of the series? Ooh, Ooh. I think my favorite gen is going to be Gen 7. I think Gen 7 is a really cool one. Sun and Moon. I mean, they started to introduce the multiverse of Pokemon games in there. Everyone gets a taste of almost every villain because they shoved them all into that one game, Ultra Sun and Moon. You get to there's a big variety of Pokemon you can catch in those games. But if I was to recommend a Pokemon game for people to start playing, let's say enter the series, I think Sword and Shield is a very, very good starting point for the game. Mm. Why would you pick Sword and Shield, do you think? I think Sword and Shield introduces the mechanics that Pokemon wants for the future. They introduce Raid Dens in there where we Mm. battle boss Pokemon. And I feel like that Mm. mechanic of having a boss in the games as and you can join up with friends and fight it became kind of a staple going forward in legends arceus we had um alpha pokemon right they started using that as a boss type pokemon uh going further than that we have our terra raid dens now in scarlet and violet so i feel like it kind of set up the format it was the the taste of what open world pokemon was it's just not it wasn't open world enough but it was just a good balance of like going Mm. into the city there was routes in the game and also the open field so it was a very good hybrid game to get into it and understand all pokemon nice um micah you haven't really played many pokemon have you no i tried to get into it back on 3ds i don't even remember which one it was and 
I got really upset when it my Pokemon evolved and it wasn't cute anymore, and I stopped playing. <laughs> I was like, I don't. It was this adorable little creature, and it turned into this like witch looking deer thing. And I was like, I'm I don't sorry, like which, this. which Pokemon was it again? Oh, this is I don't even know. This is which game was it? The deer. It was on 3DS, but I don't know. Uh, I didn't Fire like Fox, it. Fennekin. Yeah, yeah, I just got so upset when it transformed. I was like, it's ugly now. <laughs> And I was just like, no thanks. Uh, and I just stopped playing it. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, Gene, where are you at with Pokemon right now? Uh, yeah, uh, I love Pokemon, but I fell off big time just after, like right after Gen 1. <laughs> like I, was, I was huge. Uh, Gen 1, the Pokemon started when I was in high school. Um, and I got really, really into it because, uh, you know, again, I lived, I grew up on Guam. So I was, I'm surrounded by Japanese kids. They're all playing Pokemon. Um, so, so I, so I got to play along with them. Uh, and then the show came out and I watched the hell out of that. But, uh, really, I, I, I don't think I, I really played any other Pokemon game all the way up until X and Y, um, uh, back on the, on the DS. And that, that was when I started to get back into it. And then I didn't play Sun and Moon at all. That's why when I, when Philly said, oh, they put all the bosses at Ultra Sun and Moon. And I was like, whoa, like, I did not know <laughs> that that game had all, that much content in it. Uh, I was interested in, in Sun and Moon because, like I said, I grew up on Guam, but I also uh, uh, lived in Hawaii for eight years, eight years, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, Sun and Moon uh, w- was huge. The Alola region, you know, right. that sounds vaguely racist, but that's cool. You know, everyone, <laughs> everyone in Hawaii is cool with it. That's OK. You know? I mean, they made Brown Professor Oak for that one. Yeah, they, they, they did. They, 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 made. They, they, they made Pokemon full of brown people, which was interesting. First um, time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess for the first timer, uh, I, I, I think Let's Go Pikachu, the Let's Go uh, games on the Switch are. Oh, are okay. But actually, sure. actually, you know what? I take that back because they're they're great and I love them, but they they don't have the battle mechanic for catching Pokemon. Mm. Um, that is a terrible way to actually introduce <laughs> uh, someone to the series. So I think yeah, maybe Sword and Shield. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Sword and Shield is basic enough because it still has that old, uh, some of that old um, um, uh, uh, level design. So uh, Violet and 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 what the fuck was it called? The last one's called oh, Scarlet uh, and Violet. Scarlet, Scarlet and Violet. Violet. And Violet. Yeah, Scarlet yeah. and Violet are like super open world. Um, it's very very unfamiliar uh, in terms of what the Resident yep. Pokemon games is. So if you play Sword and Shield. You can be like, oh, the dungeons are a little bit like, you know, if you play the older games, you're like, oh, it's this is a little bit like Sword and Shield. Or you can see how the game is involved or whatever. So Sword and Shield is that weird little It's uh, the last hybrid. Child. Yeah, it's the last hybrid, like, old kind of Pokemon That's game true. or new Pokemon game. Whatever That's true. Be. And yeah. it's a best-selling game for a reason, right? Yeah, it um, was. That, that a lot of people uh, dogged on, uh, on, on Sword and Shield, but I really liked it because I, I was like, okay, they're clearly not doing a lot here, but... <laughs> You know, it's a, it's a great version of the, the classic formula with like a yep. weird little open world map, you know. And then you can see they try to do like an open world design with like some of the caves in there, remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, there's a cave in here. There's, it's a network of caves. Yeah. And, it, 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 and it doesn't really do anything. And then and then you see that same dumbass level design in Arceus. Um, <laughs> and then Scarlet and Violet is, is when they actually start to actually do yeah. some, something interesting. And we have DLC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, I, st- I never played the DLC for Scarlet and Violet, so I it's, and I've, I still have Scarlet and, or Violet, with, I don't, yeah, Violet uh, installed just so I can go back there sometime because I heard mm-hmm. it was really good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, awesome. All right, we got another write in from Lee is cool Jenkins. Hey, punchers, a big co- congratulations to Micah for beating her first Zelda game. Have you finally converted to the Hyrule life? What's next on your journey of peak video gaming? Are you keeping it 2D or will you be convinced to try bigger 3D titles? Wind Waker is my personal favorite and its cuteness would be a great transition from the Echo style. Thanks as always, dudes and dudette. First of all, yeah. congratulations, mm-hmm. Micah. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. So, 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 so introducing Philly to Micah, uh, Micah does not like puzzle games. No. Um, and she, so that's why she never really played Zelda games. Which is why it's like doubly interesting and fascinating that she she finished Zelda because of wisdom. You know? Wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, all puzzles. Yeah, yeah. Like the the only one that is like all puzzles. Yeah. Like like at almost every moment at every step of the way, which is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, and it was fantastic. I mean, we'll get into that later, but yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Zelda Echoes was amazing. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, in terms of what I want to play next, uh, 
I mistakenly trusted my friends to recommend me my next Zelda game. And I try to link to the past. And I'm not having a great time. <laughs> but I, I'm not giving up. I'm gonna, so here's the thing. I really liked the first part. I got all three pendants. And I got the sword. And I was having a okay. great time. I was having yeah. a fantastic time. Amazing. And then the, then the wizard spirited me away. And now I'm not having any fun anymore oh, and in the dark, dark world, world. <laughs> yeah uh i spent like an hour and a half trying to get that first crystal and i'm just like i don't I, it's i'm not having fun uh okay the first part was really fun the combat was great those first three dungeons to get the pendants were excellent if the whole yeah, right. game was that difficulty i'd play it but it suddenly got so much more difficult and i'm just like well this isn't what you sold me on in the first half here so uh i definitely i'm gonna keep like playing these i'm gonna keep trying more but yeah this is this one's i don't think for me i don't want to rely on a guide the what i liked about echoes was i didn't need a guide for this i only needed to look things up occasionally of i don't think i can kill this enemy and i want to make sure i can't actually kill him it's like oh yeah i can't kill that guy things like that is what i was looking up but uh this game is so weird that it's like i think i'd need a guide for the whole thing at this point because i just i just can't i I spent an hour and a half wandering this dungeon i I just i was like i felt physically and mentally exhausted by the end of it i was like this is not (laughs) my idea of fun i am am gonna keep playing them i am now wondering if micah's next game should actually be zelda tears of the kingdom (laughs) Oh never. No, never. <laughs> I, 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 I no, I think it might it might be that. I think because, not, because uh, if you need another not, game where you're bad. solving I puzzles. Think it's pretty good. Yeah. I, I think no, it's I, see, think, I, I think that might be the next stuff. one because it feels like you're restricted by 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 by, by, by the older games now, you know? Well, it's just so. uh, I don't like the building things though, like for Tears of the Kingdom. Like I I mean I watch the game where I'm play through, of course. And uh, watching them build like that, flying that's Aaron machines. Playing it. He's a moron. I, Come on. No, but I'm like, I don't want to do this either. I don't want to build a flying machine. And like, I don't like that doesn't that's like too much Fortnite because the part of Fortnite I hated was building stuff. I was just out there shooting people like I don't build things. All right. I don't do any of that. I just I feel, go around and shoot people while they build stuff. I definitely feel like it gets that little bit of echoes of creativity because you could cheese things by mm-hmm. coming up with stuff. That's the one thing I think that TOTK people are like, wait, you could just cheese anything if you just come up with something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about Zelda echoes and, and maybe tears more later. But yeah, it's it's yes. it, 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 what an interesting puzzle here. Yeah, for, for uh, us to solve for Micah. <laughs> exactly. It's it's which yeah. ones would I like based on this specific thing? Because and this happens. We all do this to our friends where we recommend games that we really like and we want them yeah. to like it. But it's like, no, no, no. I didn't say which Zelda game should I play next. I said, which Zelda game would I like if I liked Echoes? And you guys betrayed me. I and didn't. I I, you didn't that. ask me. You made a no, mistake. Not you, not you specifically. All of you. As a group, oh, okay. as a collective, everyone. So, <laughs> okay. uh, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying these. You know, there's there's many of them, and I still got the the old 3ds. So, you know, so th- there's a whole bunch that are on the list. But yeah, like I do have a link between worlds about that. And uh, mm-hmm. now that I'm one might actually online. be the best one, not not tears, but yeah, yeah. yeah so I want, I'm open to these. Let's yeah. all give Micah one recommendation of a Zelda game. Just one from each of us. I think Link Between Worlds would be the one then. Because um, okay, it, it, it has the same map. Because Link to the Past makes sense. Because you're like, oh, it's the same map kind of, right? Mm-hmm. So, and and obviously, Micah uh, did the first three dungeons perfectly, uh, apparently. And, and she had a great time. So that's fantastic. Uh, so Link Between Worlds, does, again, does the same thing. The same map. But it also has that same approachability where like, hey, you know, uh, let me figure this puzzle out. And the, the, the way I do it was going to be the way... I thought of it, you know, I don't know. It, it's a little bit more restrictive in Link Between the Worlds, but then, you know, there's so much freedom there. So I don't know. It's been years. I only played the game once, actually. I should play the game again. Yeah. yeah. Philly, what about you, man? What would you recommend? I think Link's Awakening, just because it's the same art style. It, the mm-hmm. enemies look familiar. Mm-hmm. You know how they play. Mm-hmm. And I was I was actually played it for the first time right before Echoes came out. So I was having a great time. I I didn't think the puzzles were too crazy in that one. Yeah, and the only I, thing I can I think by that, so I have that one. Oh too. yeah, she's ready to go on that, which is good. Right. The only thing I'm thinking about with the Link's Awakening is kind of obtuse in some ways, and I remember the last dungeon with the oh. the ball. 
the last dungeon called. is and I'm like Mike is gonna lose it yeah. right there. I didn't reach it, so I, I I only can say what I played so far. Oh, okay, you never okay. hit that dungeon, really? Nope. Okay, yo. Uh, I, mean, I'm also... I think I think it's one of the hardest dungeons in in, in the entire series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also... I, I've, I've never been able to figure it out without a guy. I've never been able wow. to figure it out without a guy. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. So, but maybe I mean, I'm just stupid. Maybe Michael will just the, the <laughs> blaze it. Who knows? No. But yeah, I, I no. agree with you, Brad. That that dungeon was. I I just finished it two, uh, three weeks ago. I could not mm. finish it without without a guy. Yeah. Austin John <laughs> plays. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I because people misunderstand as well. It's like. I don't mind using a guide occasionally. I don't mind mm-hmm. using a guide for a specific question. Like, how do I like, okay, I'm at this door and I, I really can't figure out where the key is. Like, but I don't want to play like link to the past is at the point where I missed like one point in the dungeon and I'd have to basically start from the beginning and go through the whole guide to like figure out exactly where it is the thing I missed. And that's the stuff I don't like it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so twisty, turny and, and all that. And it's like, mm-hmm. I don't mind using a guide occasionally. I just don't want to use a guide for the whole game. Like, that's not my idea of fun at all. Yeah. I also don't mind not finishing things at times. Like, uh, Dementium, the ward, for example. I am at the final boss. I can't beat him. I went online and I watched the ending, and I'm fine. It's cool. I got <laughs> sure. I've done that before. I've done that before. No shame. Agree. Same. Same. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know, I, I value my time too much. The thing with Dementium the Ward as well is that the final boss, you have to play like 10 minutes just to get to him. And then if you die, you have to replay that 10 minutes of combat to get back to him again. I did it several times. I did it over a course of several days. Mm. And like the boss fight itself is like 30 seconds if you die. And it's like, well, let's try again. I just, I'm just like, I'm done. So I'm, I'm also very comfortable being like, well, this was a fun 15 hours. We're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Micah, I would, I don't think there's a perfect answer for anything, but I would recommend Wind Waker. The only thing I'm like nervous about is it's 3D, but it's mm-hmm. a very easy Zelda game, I would say. Mm-hmm. Especially out of the 3D ones. It's probably one of the easiest ones out there, difficulty wise. Probably the easiest and, one, yeah. And it's just a very charming art style. And I think that goes a long oh, way yeah. with that game. Even yeah, though I have uh, qualms with it. it, but yeah, I think you might enjoy that one. But it, but you'd have to get out your Wii U. I know you have one. Yeah, I do. I do. But yeah, it's she's up and running. And yeah, I've I've seen so <laughs> I have seen Wind Waker played through twice already. Oh, uh, okay. So, so I'm familiar with it. Game Grumps. All right. <laughs> Those damn game Grumps. Uh, game Grumps. I also watched my ex play it the whole way through. So you oh, know, and then I watched okay. Game Grumps play it as well. So I am familiar with that game, and it is adorable. But. Yeah, that that would be one. I I would like to play that if they ever brought it to Switch. I'd be first in line for that because I do really like that one. It's got the cool red boat in it. I like the red boat. Yeah, the music yeah. is so good yeah, in that game. Good. So good. Oh, see, we don't listen to the in-game music because we're usually listening to podcasts. So, <laughs> like, I kept seeing people talk about how good the music was in Zelda Echoes, and I was like, can't hear it. Game Grumps is on, or like you oh know, my, my football podcast or whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, what I heard was good though. Brad, I'm sorry. <laughs> to be fair, that is how I'm playing Silent Hill too. Also, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god! You guys got like Zoomer brains, all of you. <laughs> I'm just busy. I need to listen to my podcast when, Must when I'm multitasking. <laughs> oh my god! All right, I'm yeah, not gonna listen even to get podcast it, so. in two tone speed while while playing Silent Hill too. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> good lord. I can't imagine that. I want to try that. Don't do it's it. It's weird. It's weird. Well, I'm I'm listening to other people play Silent Hill 2 while I'm playing Silent Hill 2. <laughs> Gene, what, oh. dude? Come on, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm joke. I'm I'm half joking. I'm I'm doing New Game Plus run that way. Okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. New Game Plus. That's fine. Yeah. I, I mean, was like I first playthrough. Come on. Yeah, for my first run through, I did play through. Well, I was talking on the phone with somebody for like the whole time, and then I got super <laughs> lost in the hospital. Uh, what while doing it? So. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Let's. We can talk about that more later for sure. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into our first news topic. First of all, Philly, we're gonna talk about Sonic real quick here. What's what's your stance on Sonic? Are you a fan? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what. N- nothing has ever convinced me to pick up a Sonic game in my entire life. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Oh, you I know, fit right into the network. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm like, a Sonic fan, but like I, I like they could show any trailer on screen. I'll be like, wow, Shadow looks Shadow looks cool. I, I'm not buying it. Like I, there's mm-hmm. nothing that has ever convinced me. I don't know if Sega themselves has to come up to me and be like, hey man, here's the game, play it. <laughs> like it's gonna take like Sega to come to me and tell me you need to try this out for me to yeah. really play a Sonic game. Mm, that's, <laughs> that's really funny. That's okay. Wow, nothing wrong see, with that. I can see how nothing about Sonic can be can be attractive because uh, Sonic got me in Sonic Adventure, but before that, I was like, eh, it's a Sonic game, that's cool. You know? I mean, it's good in Smash Bros. I like playing yeah, Sonic yeah. in Smash Bros. But yeah, yeah, outside of that, yeah, I've played many Sonic games throughout my life, but I'm never like hyped about Sonic. I'm never like, ooh, Sonic's back. I'm like, all right, Sonic's back again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it out. Sure. That's true. It's really hard to get hyped because Sonic is always around, you know? Yeah, Sonic Sonic's always really, around. Sonic has never really left. There's never been like, oh my God, you know, it's, it, Sonic isn't Sonic the Hedgehog isn't Splinter Cell, you know? We're like, oh yeah. my God, dude, oh, he's, Joe, back. God. he's back, you know? <laughs> like, no. He's always on another console. If he's not on one console, he's like on another console for another game. <laughs> That's really yeah, exactly. That is, that's true. We've never really had a chance to miss Sonic the Hedgehog. That's for sure. Yeah, that's, he he'll never go away. That's the yeah. issue. That's the issue. Yeah, that is a, that, that <laughs> exactly. is an issue. That is an issue. I think. That is an issue. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a couple news items revolving around Sonic. The first one we got is IGN did a interview with some of the Sega staff, and they talked to the Sonic team producer Takashi Izuka, and they were talking about just some Sonic and stuff like that. They were talking about the PS5 Pro and everything like that. Then they were talking with him. And he said they're going to keep his they're going to keep their focus on previous generations as, quote, as many people as possible to play Sonic games. So this is no because they were talking about PS4. So this means Sonic is definitely, you know, of course, has a big home on Switch and Nintendo for a while since the GameCube era. And to me, this just means a no brainer. But we're going to see Sonic on Switch too. Sonic's going to be everywhere as much as possible. And I think, you know, Nintendo and it's so funny because Nintendo and Sega were bitter rivals in the nineties. And now people associate Sonic with Nintendo so much nowadays. Nintendo mm-hmm. definitely won in that fight, which is really funny, but I guess just some nice confirmation for uh, Nintendo fans that the blue blur will continue to exist on their hardware. Anyone excited about that? Anyone? I am. Yeah. I love it. Gene's excited. Is that where you're going to play Sonic games? Do you think Gene? Yeah, totally. Uh, it's it's where it's where I, I played all the Sonic games, even Sonic Frontiers, the one that's mm. supposed to be next gen. Um, oh, really? <laughs> you played yeah, on Switch? Yeah, it's so I, funny. I, I played the stinky Switch version. I, I played it all the way through. Um, <laughs> that that was my, that, that was my Sonic Frontiers experience. It was it was stinky, but but uh, but I finished it. It's playable. But yeah, that's how dedicated that's awesome. I am to, to playing Sonic on Nintendo. Uh, but I do have Sonic Frontiers on Xbox because if there is one other okay. platform I would associate Sonic the Hedgehog or Sega with, it would be Xbox because mm-hmm. you know um, Peter Moore famously yeah. thought of the Xbox as the the Dreamcast, um, um, you know, um, successor. That- a successor, yeah, there you go. That's the word, successor. <laughs> and, and you know, Xbox was home to a lot of Sega uh, exclusives, including yeah. you know, pa- Parents of Dragoon, Orta, and Shenmue, or Shenmue, Shenmue. Yeah, Shenmue, Shenmue, Shenmue two. It had um, Jet Set Radio Future. Jet Set Radio Future, yes. You know, so yeah, you know, never I got always... Sonic a- Sonic Adventure though, or uh, Sonic Adventure yeah, one or two. So, yeah, Sonic Adventure just went get on GameCube, and so many people to this day still associate Sonic Adventure with GameCube. You know, yeah. Definitely. Uh, let's see here. Eric Rogers wrote in about this. Hey, the Switch barely gets any Eric new... Rodriguez. Third- Eric Rodriguez. Rodriguez, you're right. Rodriguez. The Switch barely gets any new third-party AAA games already. Do you think it'll be the same with Switch 2? With it rumored to have around the PS4 lower power specs, is that enough? The Switch makes itself mostly an emulation machine along with some cool indies, which you can also find on Steam. How long can this business model work for Nintendo? I wish Nintendo would do something crazy like using the dock to enhance the graphics to PS5 level while the portable machine outputs PS4 level power. Charge me more, but give me more. Maybe I'm just rambling. All right. So definitely Nintendo in the past has struggled with third parties. I mean, probably not with the Switch because they're just killing it. Everyone wants to be on Switch because so many things sell on it. Mm -hmm. And they have got support like back in the day, like the Wii U, (laughs) like their third party presence on there, you know, 
here's Batman Arkham Enhanced Edition. The not ar- armored, armored edition. Armored, yeah, armored oh, edition. Armor, that, that's it. Edition, I remember that. Yeah, yeah that, that's yeah. it. They get a couple of things. They had like Zombie U and stuff like that. But sometimes as the t- things go on, Nintendo misses out on a lot of bigger third party AAA games, I'd say, just because they're, you know, made for the PS5 or the Series X and stuff like that. What do you guys think? Do you think Nintendo should stick with their plan? We don't know what Switch 2 is going to be necessarily, but I'm assuming, and most people are assuming, it's just going to be like the Switch probably just a little more powerful like that. I don't think it's going to be anything like PS5 power or anything like that. Would you be willing to spend more money, though, to get a more powerful Switch when it's docked? Let's start with you, Philly. What do you think? I think anything Nintendo puts out, I'm just going to end up buying because that's just the consumer Mm -hmm. I am, regardless of, you know, what I'm looking forward to. But I mean, I any time if if one console can give me access to give me the beauty of other third parties on that console, I'll take it. That's less work for me to have to go to another console and play it. Um, And I think that was the beauty of the Switch when it first came out. It's like, oh, we could do almost everything on here. We could do exercise on here when they start putting out Wii Fit. Not Wii Fit. What is it? The Switch Fit? What was that game called? Yeah, what was that called? Uh, Ring Ring Fit. Ring Ring Fit. Fit. There you go. Ring Ring Fit. Fit. That's it. They had that. They had like mini board (laughs) games on here. So I'm like, oh, I don't have to take out my board games anymore. We can play on the little Switch screen the way they advertised it. So having that one console be able to play those triple A titles, I'd love it. I'd, I'd take that in a heartbeat hmm. and I'd pay for it. Yeah, I would pay. I would, I'd rather pay more to have a more powerful Nintendo console. I miss when Nintendo was a, a more of a powerhouse in the industry from a graphical standpoint, but I totally understand why they're not anymore. And I cannot argue against the Switch's success. If I was them, I'd just be like, we're doing it again. Just a little more powerful now though, because it, it just works, man. Everyone loves it. Uh, Micah, you mostly play handheld though, so I do. Would you be interested at all in a more powerful switch, or are you just kind of fine playing handheld? So, I mean, I would love a more powerful switch, as we discussed um, on a previous episode, where like I really wanted to play Kingdom Come Deliverance, but the switch oh, right. port is awful. Mm-hmm. It's just not powerful enough to run that game. I would love a more powerful switch so that every third party game, I sound like a presidential candidate, every third party game would be guaranteed (laughs) to run well. That's my, you know, that's what I'm running on. Every third party game would be guaranteed to work as well as it does on other consoles. That's all I'd be asking for. I, I strictly don't play certain things on switch. Like either the Batman collection, I was like, this isn't going to go well. And and that's just not something I choose to play there. Um, but I, the only thing I, so I totally agree that third party support is really important to people like me who primarily play on Switch and really enjoy handheld gaming. The only thing I'll push back on from um, our write in is, you know, saying how long can Nintendo sustain this? As long as they put out games like Echoes that are only playable on Switch, mm-hmm. we're going to buy them here. Yeah. And it runs perfectly well on Switch because they made it. <laughs> and it's like, no, I'm here for the exclusives primarily. I am going to buy third party games on Switch, of course. Like Colin and I both bought Ayudin Chronicles 100 Heroes. I bought it on Switch. He bought it on PlayStation. We both bought Octopath Traveler 2. I bought it on Switch. He bought it on PlayStation. I'm going to buy as many third party games as I can on Switch as long as they run well. But the exclusive titles are not going to sustain Nintendo, I think, forever. I don't think they're yeah. at any risk of this business model not working so long as they put out bangers like Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's not like they're in a Wii U position anymore. No, they kind of have to abandon ships. So they're on top of the world right now. So for now, whatever they're doing is working just fine, in my opinion. Yeah, Gene. Though, what do you think? Do do you think they should have a more powerful, uh, I guess, system when it's docked at least, much mm-hmm. more powerful? I mean, yeah, I'll 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 pay eight hundred dollars for it. I don't care, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> dude. It's fine. Uh, I will say uh, one thing that does make me, you know, I I never thought, oh, Nintendo doesn't need to do power, whatever, fuck it, you know, they're they're, they're totally doing fine. And then I played Astrobot. And I'm like, yo, but well, but what if Nintendo did have power though? You know, mm-hmm. like what if, what if Tears of the Kingdom did have like this level of fidelity and uh, awesomeness to its to its physics too? That that'd be a totally different game, but yeah, that'd be a fun one too. You know, uh, it, it would be a totally different game, but it it would be interesting and it'd be interesting to see what ideas would unlock once Nintendo does get access to that power. And we might have that too. So who knows? 
Um, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I also, uh, also back up what Micah says, you know, the, the Nintendo systems are the only place to have that has Pokemon, you know? Yeah. We, you never true. got a mainline Pokemon game. Um, no. So there were, there were no, you know, the Wii U only sold 13 million, you know? Pokemon games sell well over 20 million, you know? Uh, so that's the, 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 because the Pokemon fans didn't show up. If there, were, if there was a Pokemon game on Wii U, then it probably would have sold a little bit better too. So yeah. as long as games like Pokemon and Zelda are on Nintendo, people are, the, 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 that fan base is just going to move right on over. So it'll be fine. Yeah, man, you're so right. And I just like thinking about just a Pokemon game, how powerful that is. It's gross. Nintendo. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we, you know, uh, we keep talking about, oh, my God, Call of Duty, though. Microsoft is Call of Duty, right? And it's like, yeah. And, 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 and Nintendo has Pokemon, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Pokemon makes a lot more money, as you can see. There's a lot more merch. They Phil, got the shirt on. You know, the, 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 you know, the people aren't wearing Call of Duty backpacks to school. Yeah, you know, it's true. <laughs> it's it's quite crazy. They, they, um, they don't got Call of Duty notebooks and pencil cases, yeah. and shit like that. You know, like <laughs> there's a whole Ooh. different level of, of, of money making it's going huge, on huge, uh, huge with yeah. Pokemon than, than than any other IP. You know, um, yeah. So so let's keep it a buck for real. I would love to see the budget, like a Pokemon mainline Pokemon game compared to Call of Duty and just see the difference <laughs> or whatever. The, the profit margin there. <laughs> yeah. Right? It, it's it, it's, it's going to be cartoonish, you know? Yeah, they make two <laughs> versions of Pokemon also usually. So Listen, it's like... Po- Pokemon doesn't have to put any effort. Even, they can still continue not put effort and still sell. And that's the beauty <laughs> of that company. Sell yeah. two versions, <laughs> change the code here. So, so one like like five monsters are different, and then and then boom, sixty bucks. And and the funny part is from even, a kid, you know, even this even Scarlet and Violet had its own issues. Nintendo even uh, had to put out an apology on behalf yeah. of the game. Did yeah. that stop the sales? <laughs> Literally, no. It kept going. So they, they they put out an apology. One, it did not stop the sales, and two, they did not fucking fix it. <laughs> 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 yeah. they, they didn't give a shit. It was amazing. Yeah. Because I tried going back to Scarlet and Violet because I wanted to play that DLC and I was like, holy shit, this game still runs like crap. Wait, wait till you go to the DLC. There's a lake with no Pokemon there to even lag it, and you step in the lake and it lags. That's oh, crazy. No. <laughs> it's mind boggling. <laughs> Man, Pokemon's so frustrating. <laughs> it's just oh, man, like you said, man. they can do whatever they want. Doesn't even matter. Yeah, they can See, just... but yeah. Ima- Ima- imagine a Pokemon game with AstroBot uh, graphics. Oh, it's you know? over. Imagine, yeah, yeah. You know, like that, ima- that, amazing. Would, that would look so much better than Power Roll, even because Power Roll was super janky. Could just be quite honest, right? So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We'll get there someday. We'll get there someday. Someday. Hopefully, Gene. I was hopefully. hoping that would happen maybe, a long time ago. Yeah, they might just make Sword <laughs> and Shield 2 again. So. <laughs> All right. Ultra Continue. Sword and Ultra Shield. That's right. Yeah, Gene. Yeah. Don't that, put Gene. that out there. Don't put that out there, Gene. <laughs> Continuing with the Sonic news. Uh, this is from my Nintendo news. Uh, so there was a leaker who uh, put out a couple tweets saying that there is a rumored remake slash remaster of Sonic Heroes coming out. Let me read this statement. A Sonic the Hedgehog leaker who previously or correctly provided some information about the Sonic the Hedgehog 3 movie shared is claiming that the new Sonic console title is in the works at Sonic Team is Sonic Heroes remake or remaster. The individual claims that the Sonic Heroes theme game has been in development since 2023 is planned to release next autumn. Now, I've never played sonic heroes gene did you ever play it i did not touch this one uh a lot of gamecube games gamecube was a generation that skipped a, a lot of me um because i mostly just bought the gamecube for metro prime and wind waker um and i don't think i really played the gamecube for much else other than second sight that that that, that mm. that's, that's psychological uh, uh game that got overshadowed by Sios, but but was also pretty good um, yeah, a lot, a lot of GameCube games. You know, Beautiful Joe, Soul Calibur. I played those, but Sonic the Hedgehog, though. You know, I I didn't play any Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, again, a lot of people play Sonic Adventure first on GameCube, but you know, mm-hmm. I I played it on Dreamcast, and at that point, I was like, eh, me too. You know, 
I'm not going to play Sonic on the GameCube. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw never, never played it, but I definitely watch like my uh, I definitely watch the Game Grumps play the play through all. Oh, of it, really? So. That's so funny. Yeah. So oh I God, am it, very very familiar with, uh, with the game itself. <laughs> so. Um, this was on Xbox and GameCube also and PS2. Oh. So yeah. actually, it, this might have been the first time Sonic was on everything. Um, I've heard pretty good things about this game. I'm curious. I've never played it. You know what? I think I would check it out if it's coming out. Why not? I've I've played so many Sonic games already. I might as well just play them all, I guess, if I want That's to. Well, not all of them. I'm not going to play them all. There's no way I'm going to play all of them because some of those are real stinky. But maybe I'll <laughs> give it a try. Well, going by the Game Grumps run, it, this one was pretty stinky because Uh-oh. like yeah. because you have to pick one of the three heroes. So you pick like Sonic and Knuckles and Tails, mm-hmm. or and then there's the other set, and there's like Rouge the Bat and like her gang, and then there's like yeah. Big the Cat, Big the Cat and his gang. Um, Big the Cat has a gang in it. Well, Who's like, picking that team? Well, like yeah, yeah, the, the, it's the squads of three, and then I, I don't know if Big the Cat is one of the th- one of the three. And Micah, Micah, help me no, out no, here. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, Big the Cat is definitely in it, and I only know that because uh, at the recent live show, like when one of the you know Family Feud questions was about Sonic characters, and I was internally screaming Big the Cat. All right, and I only <laughs> know that because of that Game Grumps playthrough. Okay, <laughs> that's really yeah, funny. So definitely Big the Cat, yeah, and that was that's apparently like a terrible, terrible version of the game because like because you, you got to use Big the Cat powers, you know? Yeah. What's like? What is his power? Fishing? That's all I remember him doing from Sonic Adventure. <laughs> he does go fishing? Yeah. Yeah, that's I all I remember. I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, so if it's a remake or a redo or whatever, then yeah, sure. Uh, uh, let, let, let's give that let's give that concept another shot. You know, my headphones so. turned off. One sec. Mm. Keep going. Though. Yeah, yeah no, so. it would be fantastic to see Brad play something like that. Given like like I've only experienced it through Game Grumps, and so watching Brad play that would be amazing. Or you mm-hmm. know what, Gene? Maybe you and I do like a stream of playing that. That'd be fun. Maybe yeah, or we can just watch Game Grumps again. Too. I, I did. I I watched their uh, when they're fishing for Froggy. I watched that clip so often, That's, like it never gets one. old. Did, did, did you did you see <laughs> that the real life uh, Wheel of Fortune uh, uh, had the had their Wheel of Fortune uh, uh, meme happen to it in real life? No. Yeah, that, 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 there was a segment in Wheel of Fortune. So Game Grumps has has a, has a playthrough of Wheel of Fortune. Uh, where uh, both of them kept hitting bankrupt or uh, lose a turn over and over again. So it was like <laughs> like 12 turns in a row where neither of them like advanced the game at all because they kept hitting the, 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 the shitty uh, part of the wheel. And then Wheel of Fortune in real life had that happen in real life to three contestants where all three of them kept hitting lose a turn or bankrupt and nobody <laughs> was making any money or nobody wow. was doing anything. And you know, uh, uh, Ryan Seacrest was like, oh, my God, what is going on here? We've never seen this happen before. You know? <laughs> That's really <laughs> funny. Yeah. Like, we want our wheel back. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's really it, Watch the Wheel of Fortune one, guys. For, 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 Wheel of Fortune Game Grumps, look that up. Oh, there's many of them now. It's, it's it's, def- it's yeah, great. there's several of them. But, but the, the first one they ever did is like one of the funniest videos uh, like ever uh, on the internet. Nice. So. I need to apologize also, Philly. We don't talk about Sonic this much. So, we uh, we make fun of Sonic on this podcast. I'm just letting uh, you know. I'm, this is I'm unusual. Cool with it. I'm cool with it. But to put point, that up, though, Sonic Sonic Cross uh, Shadow Generations is supposed is is coming out, and like all the Sonic fans are hyped for it. I'm a Sonic fan. I'm actually not hyped for it. I'm just like, oh, uh, you know, I, oh really? I, I, mm. I'll check it out. Well, I like you said whatever. I'll check it out when it comes out. You know, but oh, like, sure. I, yeah, yeah. I'm not like excited. Like, oh my god, dude! Like, like two weeks. <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea when it's coming out. I have no idea when it's coming yeah. out. Yeah, it will just come out when it's come out, and I'll get it. You know, um, that's fine. Yeah, it's coming. That's out. What, that's we'll what I feel like for a lot of Sega games because Sega is pretty reliable. You know, Sega is pretty reliable. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, if you know, need a Sonic game, it. it's there. You can get it. Yeah, that's true. You're right. Yeah, that's yeah, plenty. yeah, I'm not worried about the rarity of the Sonic game or whatever like that. Sonic games <laughs> never go <become> rare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can always just buy any Sonic game. This is not Silent Hill Two for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep it in line with Sega right here. Good news, guys. Very surprising news, in fact, to me. Alien Isolation is getting a sequel announced after 10 years of the uh, since the original. 
they're finally putting out a sequel. Something I never thought would happen. They posted, there was a message posted on um, Twitter from, uh, what's his name? The creative director of the game, the first game. And he put out a message on Twitter to celebrate the 10 years. I'm going to read the message right now. To our fans around the world, it's hard to believe that it has been 10 years since we embarked on our journey with the release of Alien Isolation. When we started developing Alien Isolation, we had one guiding principle to create a truly authentic experience that went back to the roots of the Alien TM franchise, a new story capturing the atmosphere and terror of the original 1979 movie. It's been nothing short of an incredible, incredible to witness your passion for the game over the years to see such or see to see it reach so many players around the world. Your boundless enthusiasm, <clears throat> excitement, screams, and ste- steely courage in the face of uh, cinema's greatest killer have been profoundly rewarding. Whether you're uh, you're a nightmare mode veteran or stepping into the, um, oh, what's her name? Amanda Ripley shoes for the first thrilling attempt. Good luck. We want to express our deep gratitude. It was a dream project brought to life by a brilliant team. And the reception you have given over the years is extraordinary. On the 10th anniversary, it seems only fitting to let you know that we have heard your dis- uh, distress calls loud and clear. Today, today, I'm delighted to confirm on behalf of the team that a sequel to Alien Isolation is early in development. We look forward to sharing more details with you when we're ready. Once again, thank you until next time. So, Alien Isolation, a beloved survival horror game. I haven't played it yet. I still need to. But there was a Switch version of this game, which I was surprised <laughs> when I looked that up. I looked, I was like, what? There was a Switch version? And according to Digital Foundry, it's even better than some of the PS4 and Xbox One versions. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't like know. It that. has like wow. better lighting and like, like and, and some of the image quality might actually even be better at, 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 at like 1080 or 900p or whatever. Yeah. But like, it's That's better crazy. than the, the, the older gen games. So, yeah. Um, I love the survival horror genre. So I'm very thrilled to see this. I still need to play the first one, like I said. But what are you guys? Are any of you hyped about this? Excited, perhaps? So, I mean- uh, IGN's uh, Ryan McCaffrey is getting a lot of shit right now uh, because. <laughs> Because yes, ten I years know. ago, he gave Alien Isolation five point nine. Yeah, uh, and now he's out there gloating. See, I didn't kill the game. It's getting a sequel. Uh, well, yeah, first of all, Ryan, it did take ten years for, for it to get a sequel. Secondly, it, it was because of Ryan's Ryan's review that I did not play the game. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah. He he he. I, I I'm I'm reading it right now, and I'm distinctly remembering. Yes, this was a review that says, you know what, I can pass on Alien Isolation. So Dang. he did have an impact. Me, it was me. I, I didn't play it because of him. So, Damn. Um, and I still haven't played it. So maybe I should check it out. I don't know. Yeah. Micah, uh, what about yeah. you? I did play it back in the day. I didn't oh. love it because, though, I really was not into survival horror at all back <laughs> then. So <laughs> I was just like, not having a good time but part of why i played it was because as as i've mentioned previously on shows if you had your connect hooked up you could have it set so like it could hear you and like like famously some guy like farted in his living room and the alien heard him and like came and killed him because he heard it through the (laughs) connect and i was like that's hysterical and i love the idea of like you have to you have to stay quiet like you can't like yell out or whatever if you get startled and because if you've ever watched my old like horror game playthroughs on my channel, I get very scared. I, I cry sometimes when I'm scared. So like me having to actually like stay quiet during a game was a great challenge. I didn't get wicked far in it, though, because I was just like too scared. <laughs> Wasn't having a great time. Yeah. I would consider playing it again, though, now that I have played a couple more horror games since then. But like at that time, I was not feeling it. Aside from like, I'm like, this is really cool. I'm. I'm going to die. I, I couldn't handle it. Mm. What about you, Philly? There's a couple things with me in this game. I, I think the whole horror, uh, me and my uh, friends from college, we started getting into it. I think it was Outlast was one of the first ones we played. And we're oh, like, oh, yeah. this is a yeah. lot of fun. I think Alien Isolation came out after Outlast, I believe. Mm-hmm. So then mm-hmm. we heard of this, but then I saw that IGN article and we all looked at it because we're trying to see what's our next game. And we're like, oh, this doesn't, this doesn't look that good because of the IGN article. Mm-hmm. um so we just avoided that one but then i watched there let's Plays, and i think i thought the cool thing was it listening to you if you make a sound and i was like that's kind of crazy actually um mm-hmm. uh, th- that that needs to be 
put into more horror games that exact feature like that's to me that's an innovating feature and that's like wow mm-hmm. that defines a, a a game that they made a survival game that's really cool yeah that is really cool mm-hmm. uh but yeah, yeah thanks, i'm looking ryan. forward to it <laughs> yeah thanks ryan yeah. i know i know i know that game is weird because i definitely remember seeing that review too and i was like oh bummer kind of thing like that but then right now. <laughs> My uh, friend, Mike Huber, who's a huge Alien fan and sort of a horror fan, played it. And he was like, these reviews are wrong. This game mm-hmm. is great. And it kind of started to like the uh, it started kind of to grow reputation yeah. over time. Word of mouth kind of thing, I feel like spread over time. So that's great. But yeah, poor Ryan, you know, he just gave his opinion. And <laughs> yeah, poor Ryan, you know, you were wrong. But well, I, I, I can't even see he was wrong because I never even fucking played the games. <laughs> yeah. So, poor Ryan, though. You definitely don't deserve the shit. Yeah, you definitely don't. Yeah. All right. Guys, let's talk about what we're playing right now. Uh, let's see. Let's start with Gene. Gene, why don't you tell us? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, what? actually, let's start with Mike because we already were talking about Zelda. So let's just dive a little more into that first. Yep. Oh, yeah, sure. So, uh, well, after playing Zelda Echoes, because I assume we might kind of segment that into its yeah. own discussion, or do you want me to start with that? No, we can just talk about anything we want, Zelda, right here. All right. All right. Well, let me start quickly with A Link to the Past, just a little more in depth of what I did enjoy. Because, yeah, uh, really liked Zelda Echoes, beat the game, and had a ton of fun with it. And I said, okay, yeah, let's let's try another one. Decided to pick up A Link to the Past because I had a Nintendo Switch online. I signed up for it, all right, because everyone kept mm-hmm. telling me to. And I, I did really like those intro sections. I really like those first three dungeons. You get the three pendants and you get the Master Sword. I, I liked all of that. And then it just, the difficulty spike in the next section, just too high for me. It, it, it filtered me out, as the youth would say. So I am... Definitely going to keep trying more Zelda games, but this one, I may continue it knowing that I need a guide at this point, but I'm also just not so stubborn as to just say, well, I have to finish it because I'm like, oh, no, I don't. But I, I did really like that first section. If the whole game was like that, I would have played it like in its entirety. But the difficulty just jumped way up after you get those first three pendants and I'm just not feeling it. Um but Zelda Echoes, I yeah. What was it about really, Zelda really Echoes really that it? really drew you then, uh, even opposed a, a to Link to the Past? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I loved it. It was the whole way through. One of the key things I liked about it was the variety of the structure of the game. So, like, they had you d- similar to something like you know, Tears of the Kingdom, whatever. You have like your your dungeons and your shrines and whatnot. And in this one, it's like you have your dungeons and temples, but then you have your rifts. And some of those are really quick to get through. Some of them mm-hmm. are you know more a little more difficult, take a little more time. What I really enjoyed was that it just completely you know changed around my expectations uh, of the formula of the game. For example, when you have to go help the Zora. All right, you do one thing for the River Zora. And in my head, I thought it'll probably be a rinse and repeat for the other, the, for the Sea Zora. They'll probably have you do a very similar mission structure. And they didn't. You know, you had like two very distinct styles of gameplay to help both sides of this, one being actually much quicker than the other one. And it just completely flipped around my expectation of, oh, you know, this isn't going to be 20 hours of doing the same exact thing, rinse mm. and repeat. They mix it up so much that it really held my attention. And I found myself going to randomly do extra things like, oh, here's a rift that I need to go get rid of. I'm going to go do it. And you're like, you don't have to, but I'm going to go do it. I cool. was motivated to keep playing the extra bits because it was just so unique and different. Not all just doing the same thing over and over, you know, constantly or you know, the rifts, sometimes you have three sections of little dudes to find. Sometimes it's five, you know, it's, they just kept things fresh the whole way through. And I could not get enough of that game. I really, really enjoyed it. Much to my own surprise. I was going to try it because I told everyone I was going to try it. And I I really did have a blast playing it. It was fantastic. And those were the types of puzzles that I could handle. <laughs> Like I really only got stumped a couple times throughout the game. And mm-hmm. otherwise I was mainly using a guide for things like, I'm pretty sure I can't even kill this guy. Like I'm, I think I can't kill him. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not ready to do this yet type deal. Or mm. 
there were a couple treasure chests that like really stumped me on like how the hell are you supposed to do this Mm -hmm. and it was mostly things of like I just wasn't once I had like a solution in my head I was too stubborn to try and think outside the box more you know so sometimes I just Mm -hmm. get caught up in things like that Mm -hmm. but I really didn't need a guide very often and that's what I loved (laughs) so much about this game was it was at a level that even I could enjoy it with this being my first time ever playing a Zelda game all by myself yeah I mean it's great I'm so happy you got through it um Talk to me some of your favorite echoes that you use, though, Micah. Yeah. What were your what, what was the strategy? What was the Micah strategy? Yeah. <laughs> um. I, well, that's the thing. For combat, I really just kept leveling up my energy because I just wanted to do all the fighting myself. So oh, okay. Yeah. I, I was. <laughs> she was I just would, playing Link. <laughs> yeah. Basically, <laughs> I did. Great. Um. One of the lizard people. Um, yeah, I don't mean Zalfos. that. In a, yeah. I don't mean that in the internet way. I just mean the actual lizard guys. Um, yeah, what there do you was, mean yeah. lizard people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by you know, lizard? I don't like the way you say lizard. Yeah. You know, the ones that run the world. No. Um, <laughs> so they there's the there's like the king lizard guy who I found like somewhere, and he was like really tough. Like he took like five triangles to make. I called that guy in for like everything, anything underwater. I had the shark. I, I, I got mm-hmm. distracted and I got the shark really early on because I saw a pirate ship and I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I love pirates. And I went oh, to nice. go hang out over there. So yeah, that, that guy I called in a lot. There was like this real big boar looking guy with like a sword and a shield. He was really powerful. I used that guy a lot. Um, but otherwise, no, I did a lot of the fighting myself strictly because it was more fun that way and i was like drinking so many smoothies to up my energy levels constantly because i was <laughs> and then, then i'd be like how am i supposed to fight this guy i'm out of energy and i was like right the echoes you know but mm-hmm. that was actually my biggest gripe just like towards the end of the game was not being able to continue fighting that way so i was like oh no i, I was enjoying fighting <laughs> i was enjoying that part uh and but in like the last section of the game where you can only use your echoes and i was like well now this sucks it's still fun it was still very yeah. fun, but I, I was I was a fighter in this. Zelda was kicking butt this time around. Yeah. She wasn't relying on other people. Mm-hmm. Um, just for people to know, just warning you guys once again, we're talking about everything in this game. So if you're worried about spoilers, we said it earlier, but just making sure you, you do know, because I don't want you fumbling in here and be like, oh, what? You talked about this guy? So mm-hmm. just letting you know. Um, <clears throat> Michael, what did you think about the story of the game? Oh, it was great. No, no it yeah. was very cute. Um, you, I liked that it kind of, you know, just kept moving along. It's not like a lot of long cutscenes or anything. It's just like, bop, 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 just keep going. It yep. kept me very informed of what I was supposed to be doing next. I never mm-hmm. once felt lost as to what should I be doing right now, which is mm-hmm. key and what I often don't like about some Zelda games. It really mm-hmm. just had an adorable little story. I liked it. I, I liked the idea of, uh, the people who fall into the rift are occasionally you know, replaced by imposters, for example. Mm-hmm. That was a neat thing to add in. No, um, and everybody was just so cute. I love the little old lady Impa was very cute. And her brother was adorable. The characters were very sweet. Uh, you don't get to interact with them a lot. But there's a lot of humor in the game. Some of the missions where you have to like talk to the soldiers and things around the castle, for example, there's a lot of funny stuff in there. Oh, yeah. To find the imposter soldier. That was cute. Yeah. Yeah. That was a very cute little Mm -hmm. storyline. Helping out the the Goron, the new chief who feels very unsure of himself. That was a really cute. Darston or whatever, right? Yeah. Was that his name? Something like that. I um. Oh, we it all was start with just, Dar-Dar, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was all just so cute and so full of heart. The Zora as well, um, helping their little feud, for example, was very mm-hmm. fun. They, they had a lot of humor between them, like the River Zoras that seemed like a Yakuza type guy, and I really liked that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the only the only ones I didn't like are the is it the Dekus or the little tree the looking Dekus, people? Yeah. I don't, I don't like, like them at all. Uh... They freak me out. And I, I've never liked them. I, they, they scare me. And I wasn't having any of that. <laughs> uh, so playing through they that section. Want, they just want oh, the cotton God. candy. No, no, I didn't like that section at all. They were cute and like funny, but looking at them, they were horrifying, like nightmare creatures. I, I did not like that section at all. But uh, yeah, the, each you know different little group of people that you help 
I enjoyed their little stories uh, and the overall story. I did really like. Um, I got to say, though, the game had I don't know if these were intentional. The game had some weird innuendos in it. I don't know if you guys noticed like right in the beginning when try your little golden orb friend Mm -hmm. and he gives you the try rod. But it's like the rod is the same color as tries body and it's warm to the touch. And I'm like, who wrote that? Who wrote that? Who's doing this? And I, I'm like, there were other things sprinkled in throughout Micah the game. And, and I, was I, was like, I was like, who did this? You guys just like aren't that. reading for meaning. That's the difference. But I was like, no, who yeah, I guess did not, this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, I was the, like, the, I don't the, know. Our, our media literacy. We're, what's wrong with our media literacy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, really, my, it's just it's just like getting like 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 a like a really yeah. like good exposure. To like, like, yeah, no, yeah. this is great. This is yeah, great. Welcome, like, welcome world. See, now I can't replay the game and think of it the same. Yeah, <laughs> I know this is terrible. Like what? Like I'm gonna I'm only gonna think about that. I'm like what it's the fuck is Mike thinking? In the in yeah. the case, don't bring it back out. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> Micah, for that. Just like these echoes of wisdom, and she's like wielding like a like the dildo from Saints Row Two or whatever, you know. Warm uh, to the touch. Yeah. Uh, Darson was the Goron Chief's name, by Darcy. the way. Yeah, Darcy. Love Darcy. Darcy. Yeah, he was. Dope. Uh, Phil, what do you think about the game? Tell us about it. Your thoughts. Well, being this the most, uh, the second most uh, Zelda game I've played. Uh, Tears mm-hmm. of the Kingdom being the first one, this one being the second one. Mm. I did not think it was as hype when I first... I feel like Nintendo's marketing, first of all, behind it didn't feel as, like, strong. Like, it was just no. there. No, no, and no, then I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, that game, that Echoes game is is coming out. <laughs> um, and I think people are catching on to the game as there's media and content being posted. Like, there's a Zelda game that exists? She can do mm-hmm. what? Um, I had a great time with it. I thought having Zelda do summoning things was cool, completely different. I almost feel like this girl deserves her own like real game where she can summon things. I wish I could see that those powers brought to life in like a breath of the wild style kind of game with Zelda being Mm. uh, playable. I thought everything they did with that was amazing. Echoes, great stuff in the game. Um, It kind of, as the Pokemon guy, it kind of gave me the feel of got to catch them all as I'm Mm. wandering around. It's like, okay, we're catching these things. And then we're, making them battle other enemies. This is very (laughs) Pokemon-esque, which I thought was a really good play by the Zelda team to like do that, Um, have the whole monster collecting along your journey and and battle with them. I I wish it was a lot more. There's a lot of useless echoes that just stock up in your inventory. Like there's four (laughs) statues that were used for puzzles. I think they could have done better. They could have done better with that. Yeah. That was yeah. frustrating. Even the final echo that you find in the game is just a ball. It doesn't do anything. Um, <laughs> they could they could have done something really cool with with some of these. Uh, but then it was you really know what's cool. funny? Yeah. You know what's funny about that ball is that Nintendo spe- would, would specify do not do not spoil the ball. <laughs> not the ball. I'm like, I'm like uh, okay. It wasn't worth it talking about it in the first place. <laughs> I, yeah, I wasn't going to tell anyone about it, but okay, don't Isn't worry. That cool? Yeah, uh, I did like that they had some physics interaction in the game. Um, when I was like, I just wrapped up my Zelda coverage completely, but something when when I was playing around with all the echoes was throwing out the Ribbitune. Oh no, the Dripitune. Sorry, the Dripitune is the blue frog that you find in Farron. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that makes it rain. And then I realized, oh, because it starts raining, you throw this thing anywhere in the overworld, you can then whip out anything electric and then just walk around with it and zap everything mm-hmm. in a whole radius. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. They actually kept some physics stuff in this game because, you know, spider webs, we needed to burn things down with fire. So it was kind of cool to see that they incorporated a bit of the 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 physics engine inside of this game. Yeah. I agree totally. Gene, we've talked about this game quite a bit with each other already, but do you got any final thoughts you want to say on it? Uh, I think <clears throat> uh, I've been thinking about the game a lot. I think one of the most fascinating things, because uh, I talk so much about the gameplay, uh, mm-hmm. one of the coolest things is, is the story. Um, 
every time you play the Zelda game, you're always Link, and you're always some kind of, you know, swordsman or whatever, or oh, like you know, you're you're just a boy from the town, or oh, you're just a nephew of the uncle or whatever, right? Or oh, you're just a lazy, sleepy boy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who could ever, who, who could ever, who could ever save the Hyrule or whatever? And then with Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, it, it, for, for the very first like like ten minutes, everyone's like. Oh, oh my God, Zelda! Ooh, oh, oh, Zelda, Zelda, Zelda! So, are, are, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, it's it's interesting to play a Zelda game where you play as the main character of of the Zelda game. Yeah, you know? royalty. She yeah. is the main character of this world, you know. Um, other than the King of Hyrule, and then the King of Hyrule is gone, so she does by default just become you know the 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 the, the sole survivor of Hyrule, and uh, or the designated survivor of Hyrule. Uh, to use a, a Washington DC term, or and she's just the main character. Everywhere she goes, uh, when she reveals her face, they're like, "Oh snap, Princess Zelda!" Yo, okay, well, what 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 are you doing here? You know, um, so that's a very very interesting dynamic that uh, story wise. That I, I would, you know, I I know Nintendo doesn't care about much about story, but that's a interesting thread to pull from future games. You know, to make. Mm-hmm. The character known, you know, and you get that in Tears of the Kingdom, uh, because Link is a savior of Hyrule uh, at that point, you know, kind of if 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 they remember, if they remember, yeah. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, he he is a swordsman that did help out Zelda in, in the last game, and then so people are familiar with him. So you mm-hmm. do get that. But in Breath of the Wild, he was he was just kind of like, oh, you where have you been for the last hundred years at the most, you know? Um, other than that, he was just some some shirtless guy running around. Yeah, yeah. With Echoes of Wisdom, she's the, she's the princess, and she gets all these different outfits that make that that, that just makes her even look more like the main character. Um, yeah, and yeah, and, and she's going around to the other. Uh, uh, you know, it's interesting that, that this was probably Micah's first exposure to like the Deku and like the Zora, like the Gerudo. But yeah, she's going around and she's being a, a politician. She's dealing with the leaders of these various groups, and it makes sense. You know, it, it, it's always weird when you play an RPG. And you're like, oh, you're new in town. Go see our king real quick, you know, <laughs> immediately. You know, like, I, you know, people are people are literally trying to burn themselves in front of the White House. You know, you can't see Biden <laughs> over here. You know, <laughs> with every RPG, they're like, oh yeah, I'm I'm new to town. Let me just see your king real quick. You know, right and this I, way. You're, you're, just, you're just in the white the Oval Office talking to the king right away. Yeah. Um, Whereas with Zelda, it's like, oh yeah, no, it totally makes sense. She's she's a VIP. She's fucking Princess Zelda. Mm-hmm. Come and meet our king real quick. You know that totally makes sense. You know, so yeah, Echoes of Wisdom really, really uh, introduces a lot of interesting story possibilities. You know, yeah, yeah, I agree, Gene. It was cool to play Zelda in the sense that you got to see a lot more of like the royal family, I guess, from Hyrule. You know, as you said, Link, you're usually kind of an outsider in the royal family most often. But getting to see like uh, left and right, I loved both those two characters. They were great. And just kind of learning about the politics Dude, yeah. and stuff and Impa. I didn't even know that their names were motherfucking left and right until I saw a streamer or something like say their names aloud. And I was like, oh, what the? F- of course, their names are left and right. I, why didn't I even I, think about that? I, it took me like, I didn't think of that till like a couple hours in. Then I was yeah. like, oh, left and right. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> very clever. Very cute. Yeah. Um, I thought it was cool to, first of all, like the beginning of the game, Link and Zelda not knowing each other at all. She doesn't know who he is and mm-hmm. learning more about Link and his life in Hyrule, how he was from that to- that town. I think it was called like Suit Horn or something. Southern. You can see his, Southern yeah, you can go to his house. You can go to his house and see some of his stuff. Like you could see his, um, one of his like caps on the bed. You could see some of his boots and you can see the magic pots that he uses. So that was really cool and learning about kind of everyone in Hyrule is kind of like this guy Link helps us out a lot and all that kind of stuff. And his history of why he doesn't really speak and everything like that, how he got dragged into the rift and everything. So getting some backstory and all that kind of stuff is really great. I really appreciated all that. Yeah, they gave him an actual lore reason. We never got a lore reason uh, for him to be mute, but they actually wrote it out. So, and also in in Breath of the Wild and, T- and Tears of the Kingdom, they they wrote like, oh, he doesn't say much. Like they're yeah. writing reasons why he's not talking, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. I think they're really gonna make Link continue not to talk for future games. I mm-hmm. think if, yeah. it feels like they're really they're trying to make it canonized. You know, it'll break immersion. I feel like if Link ever talked, I would be, I I'd feel weird. 
I don't know if yeah. I could play a game if Link talked. Like, I feel I like I would look at the game differently. I think so. I think he's going to talk eventually, but I don't think it's going to be him talking a lot. He's he going to say Zelda's very few name words. or something. <laughs> Zelda. Yeah, he'll say <laughs> very few words. Like, I don't know if you guys have played um, Metaphor Refantasio yet, but the protagonist mm. in that game does speak also. But he doesn't talk very often. He Not only says like a, a sent- sentence or two like that. I could see yeah. them doing something more in line with that. With you're, you're right. Metaphor does like kind of like. Offer yeah. Kind subtle, of like nice a, subtle talking with the main character. Yeah. yeah. And it's because they're, you know, they're doing that Zelda movie, the live action movie. And are they going to have Link say a single word throughout that whole movie? I mean, it's possible. They pull that off. That's going to be. That's yeah. Gonna if be they nuts. do it, it's, it's going to be nuts if they pull that movie off. But I don't know. Yeah. I just think. They're going to have to just kind of face the point that Link's going to need to say a little more than maybe we're used to. And I think at first it will be a little weird, of course, but then we'll all get used to it. Like when I heard Zelda voice acting in general, it was a little strange for me. That's true. Then I just got used to it. But um, also, I really liked the villain in this game. He was just this weird entity from the void called mm-hmm. Null, and uh, them talking about the whole making of Hyrule with the three goddesses and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I was really happy to see the Triforce itself actually in the game. Anytime mm-hmm. you see the Triforce in a Zelda game, it, like actually seeing it and interacting with it, it's really hype. Yeah, so cool. that's huge. Yeah. That yeah, was we, really we, sweet. We, to we, see. Don't get, we don't get that often, Micah. So you, so you got spoiled right there. Uh, by, yeah. By seeing it re- re- really yeah. Yeah. You rarely see that thing like, like, oh, like all three of them together at once. That's crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. But, um, dude, for Grezzo's first standalone, like their own original Zelda game, I think they did a really great job and I'm very excited to see, you know, what they do next. If it's more remakes, I don't know if it will be, but I don't know. I think it's great to have Zelda kind of having these two different uh, phases, you know, your more traditional top down Zelda going and also your big, huge Tears of the Kingdom Zelda. So I love it, man. I'm eating good with Zelda right now. I need echoes too. bigger world, more echoes. Yeah, man, it could totally happen. Definitely. Hopefully this game sells well because I think it's great. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, we shall see. Yes, yeah, it's, it's sold super well in Japan. Um, yeah. 200,000 physical copies in the first week. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's a, good. That's a, that's a lot of units for physical too. Yeah. Yeah, people were people were excited. So, yeah, Mike, um, you would switch over Echoes too, wouldn't you? Huh? Oh, I mean, yeah, I would totally buy that. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd be all on board for them to make another one of these. Uh, because part of the thing, too, with, like, Tears of the Kingdom is, like, it is huge. And I don't really want that. I, mm. I just, you know, I, I can appreciate the scale of it. And I can, it is I can 100 appreciate hours. what they did. It's overwhelming, the too. Like, it's a very overwhelming game. Yeah, right? it's huge. And, yeah. Uh, like, I'll play like I love playing like RPGs and like like Witcher 3, for example. Like, that's a game I've spent hundreds of hours with. But there's just something less open ended about it for some reason. I don't know how to describe it other than I mm-hmm. I see people play something like Tears of the Kingdom and I'm like, I just it feels too self-directed. It feels too much like I'm just not 100 percent sure the what order I should be doing things in. That's true. And and, and the difference between Tears and, and Echoes is that Echoes says, hey, go here. Go go help the Zora people. Go help the Garuda people, you know? Right. right. Like, it, it gave you three options. Uh, like, when you needed to get each yeah. of the designations from the goddess, I don't remember the actual word yep. they used. I but it's like, <laughs> it's like, go get these three things. And it's yeah. like, all right, there's three of them to get. That's mm-hmm. not a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. I can. I, that's the level of self direction I can handle. It's a choice mm-hmm. of which one to do first. Versus, there's a thousand shrines and a thousand little Korok seeds and and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? It's, it, it's just too much. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like hey, Octopath can... Traveler is very yeah. self directed. You're just doing those chapters in whatever order you see fit. I can handle that because yeah. it's mm. it's fairly limited still. Uh, but other games just kind of start to kind of sort of bug me out a little bit with how yeah. open they are. That that's why I think that's why I think Nintendo made Echoes of Wisdom because I think they knew that okay, like there's a whole segment of people that were missing in between the classic uh, formula and this new open world formula. Yeah. You know, um, and it's like let's try. Let, that's and that's what I mentioned earlier. Like Echoes is so fascinating because it is structured like a regular sing, singular linear game, but still has that openness. You know. 
And I think yes. they did find kind of, it, it. It sounds like they did they did it perfectly for Micah, so for people like Micah, and that's what Nintendo is always doing. They're 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 trying to get people that they haven't gotten before, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, but while still trying to satisfy everyone, and that's what they, that's what they kind of did here. That's Echoes did a really really interesting trick here, and I think Micah is proof proof, proof putting of that, you know. Hmm. Oh, definitely, because yeah, I pr- like prior to this, I really was just not interested in trying any of the new Zeldas or going back to any of them and playing this one. I know that there isn't going to be a direct game that's like exactly like this, but playing this made me think then they can't then maybe there's one that isn't wicked difficult then you know it mm-hmm. made me open to trying more of them to say maybe there's one where the puzzles are a little more you know simple <laughs> for someone like me who just doesn't want to spend half an hour throwing their head at the wall trying to figure this out right it's not that i'm trying to look for a game that's exactly like echoes i'm just trying to find a game that difficulty wise is mm-hmm. similar to echoes that i would actually enjoy playing and that i wouldn't have been doing that otherwise so they they got me with this mm-hmm. one, at least to try more of their games, even if they're not all for me, they at least got me interested. That's huge. Yes, nice. that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, Philly, why don't you talk to us about what you've been playing? Two games now. Now that, that Echoes is done, I've been playing the demo for uh, Metaphor Refantasio. Mm-hmm. Love mm. it. It's yes, the sir. game feels like cinema, and I'm someone who hasn't played Persona games, so oh, okay. I'm not coming from the perspective of oh, I love this genre, I love everything about it. I'm coming from like this is a insane game. Like I like turn based games. I think they're extremely fun, but I mean the whole po- politics, the class system. It's like the world. I'm so immersed in this world right now, and I think they do such a great job of throwing you in an entire world. And I'm like. This game is what ninety to hundred hours, like deep. If you if, and I, I thought that's amazing. I are we talking spoilers in the demo or not? Nah? Um, yeah. I mean, I'll just write a note for okay. our listeners so you can talk about. Yeah, you can talk. I'm about not doing spoilers. anything beyond the demo because you know I don't know anything yeah. beyond the demo. Yeah, but I just thought I just thought there's you know it's 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 really cool that they had some options in the game when it came to like finding a big dragon in a dungeon. Like you could have walked mm-hmm. around it. Or, you know, if you're that kind of gamer, you can go in on that dragon and be rewarded by a weapon or things mm-hmm. like that. So I, as someone who like, like, likes finding secrets and different things, I'm like, wow, they're kind of mm-hmm. catering to me with these little different options. And depending on what kind of gamer you are, this is a very enjoyable game. So yeah. um, tons of fun with that. And besides that game, I'm playing a Steam game called TCG <laughs> Hard Chop Simulator. Where you oh. open that game, I don't know what about it is, but it gets all my dopamine out of the way. You make your own card shop. People walk in as customers. I don't know what about it is, is attracting me, but I stayed up to like 5 a.m. the other day just playing it. <laughs> it's a very interesting Steam game. I don't know where it came from, but it's really cool. Cool. So you're, it's one of the, sim- I know there's like a simulator game for everything nowadays. It's so right. funny. So a trading card simulator, so you're running a shop in it? You run a shop, you can open the packs, so you can pull something rare, put it out in your shop, upgrade the shop. Really cool stuff, and it makes me think, man, maybe I'm not cut out to open my own card shop because I'm really bad at this. <laughs> so it's a, it's a cool reality check to whatever I think, oh, I could sell my Pokemon cards one day or open yeah. a shop. So it's, a, it's fun. Can you play an actual card game in it as well? No, you just watch people come to your shop and play at the table. <laughs> okay. But so you can yeah, pull like, all the packs and order them, and it's crazy. I, it's, I've never really played a game like that before. Yeah. So like, le- like, let's say I, I assume like it's divided up into days or whatever. You're at the yep. shop for so many hours. What is? Wh- how does your day plan out when you're starting? Oh, so this is this is me going. I'm going too hardcore into this, but um, <laughs> you start off. It's eight o'clock in the morning. The time doesn't uh, start moving until you flip the shop sign and say open or close. Uh, so I, you know, I could purchase things on my phone. So the phone is everything. You could check websites to see if card prices are going up. So you can change your prices in your store. You can mm. order boxes in the front. So like, uh, let's say the new set came out. I press my phone. I order it. It drops in the front. I rip open the box, stock my shelves. Um, if I have employees that I've hired, they come in, they do the task I tell them to do. And then I open up my shop. People come in, they look at my cards, they go to the counter and they hand you cash, which you will have to manually get the change for them. Or they give you a credit card, which you just quickly enter in on the pin and get it. And the day goes from eight to nine and you can level up the shop by expanding it. 
And uh, eventually you'll be just making tons of money where you can just rip cards from your own stock. <laughs> That's um, really cool. Yeah. So when you level up your shop, can you like decorate it with stuff or yeah, anything like you that? Get more, you can get uh, uh, access to more shelves. You, as you level up and get more XP, you get access to different packs, which might have a $10,000 card in it, right? And then there's that, that mm -hmm. one nutty buyer that may buy that card. They come in, they look at your cards. I don't know. I just, I'd never played a game like that before. It just, it blows my mind that it, yeah. it functions like that. So it, it sounds fun, actually. I could see it the is. appeal in that. It is. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Gene, what about you? I know you've been playing Silent Hill 2 a lot. The remake mm -hmm. of it. I've also been playing that. But whatever you want to talk about first. Yeah, uh, I, I I don't want to talk too much about the remake because I'm still writing my review on it. Um, don't worry, everyone. I, I, I like the remake and I, I recommend people. <laughs> I recommend that people will check it out. Uh, I do have a lot to say about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of that is because I am playing Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition, the fan made mod uh, that came out a couple oh, of years right. ago. Yeah. Um, Oh my God, what an incredible conversion. What an incredible port of this game. Um, it, it came out with its final update a, a couple months ago. So it has all the features right now. You can have, you can add back in uh, the, the PS2 uh, graininess. Um, it has uh, widescreen and ultra wide support. Uh, 60 frames per second, uh, very power efficient. Uh, uh, the control, it, it, controls work just, just great. Uh, you can save anywhere in the game. Uh, so you don't have to re rely on the save points. Um, and it just reminded me uh, what a fantastic game Silent Hill 2 was. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to con conclude my thoughts on a remake because it's been like probably over 10 years, even more than that, probably. I think I, I probably the last time I played was, was like 2008 or something. Um, so it's been so, so long. So I actually uh, installed it on my Steam Deck. So I, I got it running on Steam Deck on a Linux-based system, <laughs> the old uh, 2001 Director's Cut edition of Silent Hill 2, thanks to that mod working on Steam Deck. Um, and I beat it in uh, just last night. Uh, I, I beat it in one run, uh, one single run, five, hour, five hours. Um, mm -hmm. Man, uh, it, it just reminded, reminded me that it really is one of the best survival horror games of all time. Uh, just one of the best horror games of all time. It just it just moves really well. The puzzles are good. Um, I enjoy. I, I like the camera. I, I, I like fixed cameras, camera angles, and tank controls. I'm used to it, so it, it's totally fine for me. Um, yeah, I, I really do. I, I think people should check out the remake. I implore people, especially if you, if the remake makes you curious, to check out the original. And it sucks that Konami is not selling it in, uh, in a proper package you know yeah i think the only thing you can do is the hd collection HD collection on xbox but like yeah that's where i played it recently yeah it's um, not the best version of the game not the best version of the it, game and it I, is actually an option. On, I actually looked up on nexus mods right now there's actually a, a new mod for the the the, the silent hill 2, 2 remake to make it the hd collection you just remove all the fog from the from the 2024 remake <laughs> <laughs> and it That's just funny. looks like Sally Hill just got hit by one of the one of the fucking hurricanes that are attacking the south right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, right. uh, Sally Hill Two Enhanced Edition. Uh, go Google it. Go look it up. Uh, you obviously have to download your own ROM file of the original Sally Hill Two and attach it to the mod of the Enhanced Edition. But uh, any any modern PC, any PC should be able to play it. Um, so I am lore people. If the remake is making is making you intrigued in Silent Hill Two or Silent Hill in general, go check out the original because I will say the remake is a lot different. I, I, I wouldn't say way way different. That you know this isn't like like a Final Fantasy Seven remake situation, or even like a Resident Evil Four remake situation. Because um, I think Resident Evil Four remake was actually quite pretty similar to to the, to the original game at least in terms of sure the pacing yeah. at a tone right mm -hmm. but there's a lot different in the remake at least in terms of the story i think uh that that that, that people are missing out on uh, from the original uh, mm -hmm. the remake offers new things that is different and is interesting too um and it's not bad um i'm trying to be objective about it but ob objective about it because i don't want to say oh the old version is better because it's supposed to be clearly awkward this way that, or whatever like that the new version is trying to do its own thing and it does it pretty well it does it good but, yeah, it's it reminds me of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 2 Remake, I guess, Gene. A little it bit. It feels like yeah. much closer to that, I guess I would say. They both do different things. They're similar, of course, but they can both. So far, my time with Silent Hill, they can both stand side by side with each other and coexist. 
I think I think that they should coexist, and it's not Bloober Team's fault. I think Bloober Team did a great job. You know, mm-hmm. they, they they did their they as everyone says they did their job. Uh, for me, my beef is with Konami because because you're not <laughs> releasing the old the old version. Yeah, uh, that is annoying. Yeah, and also it sounds like they gave Bloober Team really confusing instructions because they're like, oh, well, you can do your own thing. Well, not too much though, you know. And then and, and then that that reflects <laughs> on the product where it, it, it's kind of different, but it's kind of not. And it's like, okay, you know, I, I kind of wish that, that, that I, I wish these fucking people will make up their minds, you know, like, it, and it just goes to Square Enix too and Final Fantasy VII remakes, you know, like, I wish you would just, I, I wish you, you either just committed to either giving us a straight remake or giving us something completely different, you know? Mm. So I don't know. We'll see. Cool. Any other games you want to talk about or just that for now? Uh, yeah, I think that's really uh, all, all I'm playing cool. really. I'm, I haven't really played much else. It's just been, cool. a, a, you know, I got Silent Hill 2 on friday the, the remake um mm-hmm. and i beat it over the weekend and then i beat enhanced edition last night so it's just been all silent hill 2 uh, lately for sure nice uh yeah the only thing i've been playing is silent hill 2 also i'm only like four a little over four hours into it i'd say i'm like at the very end of the apartments gene oh, but man. um so far with the game i've been very See, that's crazy impressed. four hours in the apartments i spent mm-hmm. five hours beating the entirety of silent hill 2 the original game yeah. last night yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if so you know you're doing Silent Hill 2, yeah. yeah, it is longer. And if you know you're doing it Silent Hill 2, of course, you can blaze through it very quickly. Yeah. But um, I mean, I'm taking my sweet time with everything. I'm scoping everything out, taking a knee all the time. But do you, do you want my final play count for Silent Hill 2 remake? No, or? don't. Okay. I've heard don't rumors, work. but I will just you can tell me later off air. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm glad I asked because because, you know, it, 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 it might be a surprise. But yeah yeah it's definitely longer for sure so yeah i know it's a longer game but um yeah i think it's been really good so far i like the encounters feel very very intense it feels like way more like a struggle for your fight for your life and that kind of thing it was much easier in my opinion to avoid a lot of enemies in the original game gene i don't know if you'd agree with that or not but no, totally to- totally uh they throw you in it a lot more in this game again yeah there's a wide berth in this game they they, they will funnel you in you know mm-hmm. uh, it's like maybe you can avoid it you might take a hit while, while trying to avoid but it does feel like that they're kind of squeezing you in, into more encounters for sure yeah Especially uh, the streets, right yeah yeah the art direction is fantastic the atmosphere is so good like they nail they're in my opinion they've nailed it so far it like looks exactly how it should in my opinion mm-hmm. and of course the music is super good as well. Kiriyama Oko coming back for it. So, so far, Gene, so, so far, so good for me right now, the game I'll see as I get further along, but I am enjoying it very much right now. Mm-hmm. Exploration is really, really excellent. I think. Yes, it is. I think, they've kind of enhanced. They've done some tweaks at the beginning of the game, stuff like that. Yeah, it's, really fun, it's fun to walk around and like, the you know, like, hey, the, the, the cafe Texan is open now, so I can walk around mm-hmm. that, you know, like, like, oh, Neely's bar has expanded a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff's um, all good. Yeah, and then the apartments, uh, it's it's yeah, it's a little bigger, it's a little longer. Um, but the exploration is fun. Uh, I will say that the best thing about it is the level design in this game. Um, mm-hmm. The level designers in this game, they actually they they absolutely cooked. It's great, great level design. Probably the best level design of the year, besides like Shadow to Earth Tree, right? But yeah, yeah, I think it's so. really good. Yeah. All right, let's get back into some of the news. Uh, we got, there was another interview going on and I got this via my Nintendo news where the Sui Coden one and two director is hopeful a new game will come. And this was actually originally from Famitsu. I'll read this Japanese gaming publication. Famitsu has had the opportunity to chat with Takahiro Sakayama about the upcoming Sui Coden one and two HD remaster, which is set to release in March, 2025. Talking to the site, Mr. Sakiyama says he is hopeful about the future of the series and that he uh, they wish to expand the IP, which presumably means starting work on another entry if the demand is for is there from the fans of the classic JRPG series. Now, I've never played Suikin in games. I've never played one or two, but I'm going to play oh, the collection. Yes. So I'm excited about this. But Gene, right. it sounds like you've played them. Does this mm-hmm. get you excited? The idea of possibly more Suikoden from them? No, no, <laughs> I do not want more Suikoden uh, because there was a lot of Suikoden already, and most was, of the series, yeah. most of the series was not that great. Very confused, so I don't know what they're even talking about <laughs> because because those are like three games that continue on from two. 
And uh, so I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't know how the fuck they they, they they expect anyone to even play. I played Suikoden 3 and I didn't really like it that much, you know? Mm, so I that was a PS2 like game, right? Huh? Yeah, it was a PS2 game. game. Yeah, and, I, and I skipped the next one. So I don't know. how. how it, it, so if me, uh, someone who thinks Suikoden 2 is probably one of the best RPGs of all time, skipped the rest of the series, I don't know how the fuck that they think they're going to continue. It's like, it's like, it's like trying to continue Metal Gear Solid Six after Metal Gear Solid Five or whatever. Like, what the fuck are you gonna do? You know, like, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, like what? Like what, what? What are you trying to do from 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 here on out? You know, yeah, um, um, maybe just but, remaster the other ones. I guess that, that like that'd be fine. I guess you know, re, or, or re-release them. That'd be bring cool. Bring it to a new audience. I think yeah, that's bring it to a new thing. new audience. Like like fix up the quality of life issues because you know that there are there are there there, there are just QOL issues that you can just streamline for those games. But yeah, so we get in one and two. Um, I used to, I I I, st- I would still play Three Good and Two as one of the best RPGs next to like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. Um, oh, it, it was among that that trio of like I think this game is is as good as those, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was one of the first RPGs to really have a continuing story where the decisions you made in Three Good and One will continue and affect the 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 the, the, the story of Part Two. Yeah. So that's why when Mass Effect did it. It wasn't interesting to me because I was like, oh, that's just like Suiko then, you know? Wow. Awesome. You know? Yeah, yeah. Suiko, cool. Suiko then did it first. And, 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 and <laughs> it, was, it, it was super fascinating. I just learned something new on a podcast today. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are you going to check these out, Phil? I, after the comparison of it being that good, the Suiko then too, mm-hmm. I might I might just mm-hmm. pick it up and, 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 and play it now. It's it interesting. Awesome. Because, it has 108 characters, 108, uh, you can have 108 party members, what? and it's a party of six, so you can form the party any way you want, and it's interesting, because, mm-hmm. because Phil, you're going to like this, because you fucking have, you have to fucking collect your party members like Pokemon, there are 108 <laughs> of them, and there are secret, there are secret party members you can only find if you, if they meet you secret sold conditions. You me already, you yeah. sold me. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. This is that kind of game where you're just like, oh fuck, I'm missing, I'm missing Clive. What, you know? this, is, this is what they would need to do on a on a release of a game, and that's how they need to advertise it. Just the way you just said that to me, that yeah. would sell me on a modern RPG like that. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're just like, oh shit, I'm missing Clive, the rifleman. You know, and it's like, oh, that that'd be cool to have a rifleman on my team, like in the, in this ancient Chinese. Uh, uh, a uh, 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 fantasy world, you know, it's awesome. And now, now I'm hyped about the news all of a sudden, and I hope mm-hmm. they do something like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm really, really excited for the for these remasters, remakes. They, they look beautiful, and the games were already pretty beautiful in the first place. And the great thing about this is that they're they're they're, they're also kind of half RTS, where mm. like because you're ha- you're you're gaining 108 people because you're building an army, like you're actually like building an army, like a nation. You, you're building your own outer heaven in, in Metal Gear. Wow. Um, and you take your troops out into battle and you have to like, it's it's an RTS. And mm-hmm. then they also have one-on-one like duels where the game suddenly becomes kind of like a, like a, like a Pokemon game all of a sudden. It's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a one-on-one uh, turn-based battle where you just, we're just beating the shit out of, uh, out of the other person. And there's like actual like emotional weight to that battle. It's awesome. Really, really dramatic game. Awesome. I know Nico, I'm are you interested? Oh, definitely. Much like you, Brad, like I didn't play these before, so I am excited about having a chance to play these. Along with um the PlayStation showcase recently had like the lunar remasters. Mm-hmm. And it's like once yeah. again, uh, I never played this and That's it seems great. like a perfect mica game. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely gonna be checking these out along mm-hmm. with the lunar remasters, which are are those also spring of next year? We're gonna be very busy. There's a lot of yeah. games coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. I think so though, Micah. That sounds right. But yeah, uh, so yeah. Uh, JRPG City for me. I know I'm it's it's crazy, man. There's so much stuff to play right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm super stoked for Suikoden. Can't wait to play it. And yeah, if these do well, if they remaster three, four, whatever, I won't be mad about that. All right. Next story. New Avatar games coming. The last Airbender, not the James Cameron one, the, the Airbender, that Avatar, an art, a triple A RPG coming from Saber Interactive and Paramount Game Studios. Now, this is via IGN. Got some little bullet points on it. Still early in development. The biggest game ever in the Avatar universe puts players in the role of a all new, never before seen Avatar and takes place thousands of years in the past. 
Players can expect to be immersed in a vibrant world, master all four elements, engage in dynamic combat alongside uh, companions, and experience the challenges and decisions that come with being the keeper of balance in the world. Story-wise, it'll feature elements both new and familiar to fans of the franchise. So first of all, I guess my question to you guys is, are you into Avatar The Last Airbender right away? Because I think that's going to decide if you're going to play this game or not. Uh, no. Okay, no, I don't we got like one it. no. Okay, we got <laughs> one no. I watched a little bit. I, I never super got into Avatar, but I think Avatar rules. But I just never super got into it. Uh, so mildly interested, you know, uh, okay. it might get me back into Avatar. Uh, I just never, this is like after my time, you know, this is like, like I barely know SpongeBob. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I feel like Avatar, like it, it's kind of like around that generation too, you know? Uh, so yeah. this was like right after I stopped paying attention to cartoons, you know? Got it. What about you, Philly? I had friends that are into it. I never got like deep into it. Their fights, I've seen fight scenes in it that are really cool. I've seen like yeah. people be hyped over it. I think it's a cool series uh, in general with the lore they have behind it. From from the way the uh, the, the all new, never before seen Avatar, it kind of seems almost like you're customizing your Avatar, so it kind of fits yeah. the player role. Um, so it's just basically trying to, I guess, bait more people into the franchise. That's the way they're framing it. So it's like your own story. Then you can, you know, jump into the real lore and, and watch the show and everything else after that. I think it's just going along with all the Netflix shows and all this stuff together. It's just connecting everything. Yeah. Um, I've seen some of the show and it was good what I saw, but I haven't seen all seen all of it. So I can't say for sure, but I think the idea of this game, it sounds interesting. Like the world of Avatar is pretty cool. You know, you got all these different lands, the Fireland, all that stuff are usually the bad guys. And having an open world RPG, I guess you can run around with all these powers. I'm just thinking about what you could do for like traversal, maybe use some of the wind powers to jump up really high or lift you up, fire stuff to burn things. I don't know. I immediately thought of, which is probably not a great example, is like Breath of the Wild and like what it would be to have these kind of powers in that world and mm. see what you could kind of do. It sounds like it could be cool. I do think you're right about the sense of probably make your own avatar. And I think a lot of people will really enjoy that. But um, it's still early in development, but I know a l there's a lot of fans of those shows and that series. So that's really cool. I'm happy and I hope it's a really good one because I know there's been some avatar games in the past and they're usually not so great. So we're hopefully need, those fans. We're yeah, gonna gameplay. <laughs> we're going to need yeah, some gameplay. Need gameplay. Yeah, but hopefully this is a good one, but we shall see. And also just a quick little uh, story here. F-Zero Climax and F-Zero GP Legend are coming to Nintendo Switch Online October 11th. These were Game Boy Advance games, I believe. I think they were, Gene. And what's interesting is uh, F-Zero GP Legend never came outside of Japan. So we're getting that for the first time. And these games honestly look pretty fun. I want to check these out. I like F-Zero a lot. Uh, Philly, are you an F-Zero guy? Not an F Zero no, guy. I'm, I'm hoping for a modern F Zero game. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> yeah, hoping for that. I'm sure. Yeah. What about uh? What about Eugene? Do these look appealing to you? Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, I was pretty excited about it because I because I never played them. I'm not a huge F Zero guy. Um, you know, I did enjoy the F Zero GameCube game, which I can't even fucking remember the name of. Uh, uh GX. GX, of course, yes um so you know i i did have a good time again i didn't play a, a ton of gamecube you know um mm -hmm. but but I, but I did bar that game uh i did uh, i of course played f-zero on super nintendo and it was like yeah mind-blowing it was like it was like life-changing so i don't know um i've never been one of the people who've been like oh my god where's f-zero you know um because i feel like we've gotten a lot of games that are like f-zero um you know, uh, just fa fast futuristic games. You know, we 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 have a lot of those. So I feel like yeah. that 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 genre is like well met. You know, uh, Star mm. Fox. We don't have we still don't have a lot of cartoony space shooters with rat, 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 rabbits or frogs and everything like that. Like that's why I'm still more like, hey, where's Star Fox? Because you know, that's still that's still a genre that's that's yeah. still like, really built. Like obviously Ace Combat. Like I said, Ace Combat feels like Star Fox, but we're still not getting a ton of Ace Combat games either. You know, so uh, yeah, Star Fox games uh, still want F Zero. I, I would I'll be super hyped to see it back, but it's not one that I, that, that I've been dying for. But I get I yeah. get the clamor for it. I get the clamor for it. I'm I'm I'm, I'm with you all. 
if they bring uh, Star Fox back, Gene, they better have the the voices still. I don't want them. Yeah. I don't want them speaking in English. I want no, them going no, no, no. and all that kind of stuff. That's what I want from it. Yeah, I don't, yeah. The, the Star Fox movie needs to just be that too. Like we're yeah, just talking exactly. about. Oh my god, what what if Link is mute the whole time? No, <laughs> if Star Fox, if, if he's regular English and Star Fox, that, that's fucked up. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Micah, do you have any interest in the F Zero series? In these games coming um, out. No, see, I did watch the little announcement trailer, and this looks like motion sickness, the game for me. Got so it. I'm, I'm going to pass. I, oh. I'm one of those people that some of those games, I, I can't handle it. It's why I really never got into VR, because PSVR makes me feel awful. So this, I'm glad it's coming for the people who want it. But just watching this trailer, I'm like, oh, God, I, I think this game <laughs> would make me feel very sick. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh f-zero is in such a weird spot with nintendo like we haven't had a brand new f-zero game i guess you would think of like we've been getting weird things that are like kind of new i guess like f-zero 99 is still kind of a thing and it actually was pretty fun i played some of it and it was really cool to see f-zero come back but we haven't gotten that true gx sequel or anything like that because f-zero gx is awesome that game rules it's so good but I don't yeah, Gene is saying I don't know if there's necessarily demand for it or their market for it right now, but at least put Captain Falcon in the next Mario Kart or something, man. They put his tracks in there and they put his car in there. Get him in there at least, for God's sakes. Mm-hmm. At least he's in Smash. Show the man some respect. All right. <laughs> A little more uh, troubling news though. Ubisoft is in trouble. Uh, this is via Bloomberg that was reported. Tencent and the Guillemont family are reportedly considering taking Ubisoft private as part of efforts to stabilize the company amidst its disastrous 2024. So Ubisoft, long history on Nintendo. They are actually one of the third party supporters that seems to support it very strongly at launch, especially like I was saying, they had Zombie U and stuff like that. They had the Rabbids games on Wii. They're always trying to do something on there, but. Ubisoft has had a lot of fumbles recently, particularly like Skull and Bones with the reports of that costing upwards of 650 million to somewhere between 850 million. And it's just doing terribly. But I just want to know what your guys thoughts about Ubisoft are right now. Gene, let's start with you, dude. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to say too much because uh, I'm actually going to be talking with Colin. Um and hogue about this uh, later uh and i i, I actually mm-hmm. talked about it uh, extensively on constellation too uh but yeah oh, okay. ubisoft, and, ubisoft yeah if we're talking a lot about a lot about yeah. ubisoft these days but uh, <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's tough for me because uh, I, I i've enjoyed ubisoft games over the years you know i i uh you know they 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 fell upon the prince of persia uh license and that's you know prince of persia mm-hmm. And works with Jordan Mechner are very, very close to me. And Jordan, Jordan, so Jordan Mechner is the creator of Prince of Persia, and he is also the creator of the very first video game I ever played, Karateka. Um, so his game has always mean a lot to me. And he was also involved in the recent Lost Crown Prince of Persia. Yeah, which was uh, great. Game too. Yeah, which was great. And that was supposed to be another kind of game too, but you know, it ended up being Lost Crown. But so, yeah. I, I, w- Again, Ubisoft employs 18,000, 19,000 people. Uh, that is an incredible, that is that is yeah. about amount, that is just slightly less than the amount of people that work at like a Facebook or something, you know? Um, yeah. Why is Ubisoft uh, employed like they're a global network <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, of something, you know? You make Assassin's Creed games, you know? Yeah. Like, like, why do you have that many employees? Like, like you're supporting, like, infrastructure, like the digital infrastructure of the net here, you know? Mm. But, they're all, but they're all making skull and bones, and they're all, you know, uh, on, on, on the, uh, the, the assembly line for Assassin's Creed games. That's what it is, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's why they're able to, to, to take out these Assassin's Creed games. Uh, uh, so... Uh, uh, that, that that's why the, 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 they 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 take so fast to to make because uh, you just have so many studios. But I don't I don't know how this is sustainable. So <laughs> sure doesn't seem like it right now. Yeah, uh, Micah, what about you with Ubisoft? How are you feeling about them? Yeah, I I certainly am someone who sort of fell off their games uh, the last few years. Like I was a huge Assassin's Creed fan, but I really stopped playing after Black Flag. They made a big decision 
with how they changed, they like fundamentally changed Assassin's Creed. And it did sort of splinter the audience. It, of course, brought in new players who were really interested in the, these new games that they made. But someone like me, who was really like into the original style, I just didn't like it as much. Uh, I don't hate on those games. I just didn't like it as much. So they made some really bold decisions with some of their like games. And it was a choice that, yeah, they lost some people like me. They gained some new people in the end. How well does it shake out? Clearly, they're still making many Assassin's Creed games. But this newest one is fraught with controversy. Not their best move, I don't think. They also, you know, other things like Far Cry, for example. I, I'm the person who I'm like, these are stale to me by now. Right. Um, I really, really loved uh, three and five, but I had no interest in six because just the setting just didn't really intrigue me. And, and I was like, yeah, it's it's more the same. And that might sound hypocritical for what I just said about Assassin's Creed, but I'm saying that because Assassin's Creed typically had like very unique stories each time through and Far Cry for what it is. It's like, you're going to go free some land, okay? There's people <laughs> and they're they're trapped for various reasons. You're going to go liberate them, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And if you really love them, then they're comfort food in that regard. But for me, I was like, well, I, I just don't need to keep playing these. They're too much the same. All right. And that was my stance on those. So Ubisoft just seems like they're making for some of their titles, really bold decisions for other titles, kind of keeping things the same. It seems like they're trying to find a balance between keeping an audience, gaining new people to try things out. I'm not a businessman. I can't offer them any advice, but it, it is just one of those things of, man, this is such a huge company, uh, as Jean mentioned, to be making like errors like this, to be gambling on things like putting a controversial figures in Assassin's Creed, for example. It's a weird thing to do when you have this much power in the industry and so many people in your employment to take such huge risks like that. It's It'll be very interesting to see how this all shakes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, Philly, what about you with Ubisoft? Are you a fan of them, first of all? And um... I loved all the Assassin's Creed games up until I think I stopped at the one. It was the this. It was the Brit the British and the Americans. That one was really That's three. Cool. That's three, that right? Three. Three, yeah. three. I thought was. I mean, the whole when they revealed that, I thought that was so sick that it was happening. Like this is like mm -hmm. the history books I'm reading. It's happening like in that game. I'm like, oh my god, that's George Washington. This is crazy. I think that was probably my biggest peak of like like history and Assassin's Creed. Um, I thought that was great. But then I felt I, I, I do agree that they started to make uh, changes, drastic changes to their game. But then I also feel at the same time, they also just keep doing the same things over and over again. Uh -huh. And it gets stale. It's like, all right, can't wait for the next. Oh, it's exactly the same quest, the exactly the same setup, the exact same things over again. I've also played the Ghost Recon series. I, I, I enjoyed the Ghost Recon series. I think it's fun when you play with friends and you have like some kind of role play with the game. But I, outside of that, if you're booting up Ghost Recon on your own in that giant land by yourself. It's like the most boring game ever. It's the same <laughs> rinse and repeat task. Um, so I don't know. It just it just feels weird that Ubisoft underperforms for such a big company that it is. And like we talked about, they take these weird gambles on things that they should be able to solidify. And I think they should be leading the game industry with how many employees they have and what they can bring to the mm -hmm. table. It's just, it's just odd. It's just very strange to me. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to play shadows just cause I'm burnt out on Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I've played many of them. I'm just like, I need, I need a break and stuff like that. So it getting delayed isn't a big deal for me or anything like that. But mm -hmm. there's things I like about Ubisoft. Like, um, I played Beyond Good and Evil for the first time this year. Mm. The remaster, whatever they did. And it definitely has flaws, but I could see some cool charm there and things that people really like about it. Some weird ideas. And I like the Rayman games. Those were really fun, particularly like Origins and the one after that was it Legends, I think it was called maybe. But those were really fun. But I don't know. Yeah, Ubisoft just hasn't really been clicking with me. It's just like, I don't know. Watchdogs, not not really for me. Anything like that. Skull and Bones, definitely not for me. So, I don't know. It's hard for me to get excited for a lot of their kind of stuff right now. But I know they used to be a huge company, man. People really loved a lot of their games. 
uh, yeah, Star Wars still Outlaws. Are a huge company. But... Yeah, they still are, but it's like <laughs> Star Wars Outlaws is okay. I just don't think it was as good as it needed to be for them and stuff like that. And it's just like all these little mistakes, man. It's just I don't know, maybe death by a thousand cuts for this company. I'm not sure. They're adding but, up. Um, not now. Yeah, they're, 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 their mistakes are now adding up. Yeah, they had an extreme sports game recently that was actually pretty good. Or Riders Republic. Um, That's it. Yeah, I was like, they did steep before that, right? It's like yeah. they've done a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, Riders Republic was pretty good. It's just that no one played it, you know. Yeah, and it's like they had that roller drone game or whatever the hell is called. What was that roller derby game? I don't know. They put out some game like that, and they did. Um, oh, it's like Four Honor still going. I know that was like going forever at least. I was going for a while, still- yeah. That was going for a long time, so I don't know. They do some, they get some hits here and there, but I don't know, man. Whatever they're doing, they're just spending way too much money, not getting enough profit. So I guess we'll see how things go with Tencent, like potentially stepping it. It's gonna be interesting to see how things evolve. Because like, where's that Splinter Cell remake they teased or they announced years ago? They didn't still haven't that. seen anything. They haven't seen anything on it. So I don't know. It's just a weird time to be a Ubisoft fan. So. Hang in there, guys, I guess. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, Immor- Immortals Phoenix Rising. They tried that. Immortals, and, yeah. And, like, oh, no, no, forgot no about, about that. that. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah, remember the Breath of the Wild like or whatever? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I played it. It was okay. It, it kind of okay. like played it, and I was like, you could do a great sequel, I feel like, if you yeah. build off this. It was okay. The world was cool. I didn't finish it because uh, I, I became Micah. Some of the puzzles were bullshit. And, and I was like, <laughs> fuck this. I don't want to use a guide. Fuck this. I don't want to play this right now. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I get that. 100%. Yeah. Well, I, I did think some of the puzzles were bullshit. I was like, this is, this is yeah. boring. You know? I hate this. <laughs> All right. Just a quick little news thing. Pikmin. Our beloved Pikmin are sprinkled throughout the San Diego Zoo right now in an insane crossover with Nintendo. Uh, this runs until November 28th. Mike, I'm sorry. We were just there, <laughs> but it didn't. You weren't there when it happened, which is a real bummer because, you know, going around the zoo, the San Diego Zoo, I haven't been there in a long time, but it is really cool. You know, like watching a gorilla and maybe you'll just see a little Pikmin by a gorilla. That seems really cool to me. What do I you guys know, think about the- this? The one image they shared is just so cute. A little Pikmin like up on the rock there. Mm-hmm. I, I I would love to have seen this. Uh, I'm bummed. I don't think I'm going to be back in, in San Diego before the end of <laughs> November, unfortunately. But I would have been all over that. I also haven't been to a zoo since I was a child. So hmm. that would have been uh, a fun thing to do. But good for them to these are the type of things I like to see Nintendo do to kind of get more families like, you know, hyped up about some of their games and titles and, you know, get kids involved in ways that like you're already at the zoo and now there's a little Pikmin here. I like things like that a lot. I think that's a cool thing to do. Whereas it's not some limited item that only three people in the world can own. It's yeah, just go and look around for the Pikmin, take some pictures of them. I I love that idea. Mm hmm. Yeah, because they they dip in their toes in theme parks universal yes. you know they got the ones here in japan i've actually been to the one in hollywood and it's really cool it's small but it's really cool and well done so they're getting more into that kind of stuff and i mean you know, sprinkle those pikmin everywhere do more of that kind of stuff more promotions pikmin i don't know put them in like at a macy's on black friday and just see what happens right. do something crazy yeah. pikmin at Publix. all right yeah, i'm just pikmin going to the grocery Publix, store yeah. <laughs> And you know, there's a Pikmin in the, the fish department. There's a Pikmin in the cereal aisle. Like, that's yeah, what I exactly. want to see. Yeah, put them at Costco, anything like that. Gene, <laughs> you want to see Pikmin? In the, in the zoo? I, uh, are you sure? Yeah. It'd be, uh, how long is it going for? I don't know. Uh, until the 28th of November. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get there in time. But What about, yeah. where would you want to see them put Pikmin, though, in a crossover like this again? Um, well, I'm thinking about DC. Uh, you know, we have an arboretum here. Uh, yeah, and, and also like the 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 cap the 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 uh, the greenhouse on on Capitol Hill. That'd be cool too. Mm-hmm. You know? Maybe the next inauguration, have a little Pikmin yeah. holding up a microphone <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, have the president swear in on a copy of uh, the 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 Hyrule the Hyrule Historia books. You know, yeah, uh, that that's how I would get a uh, that's how I would get sworn in. Yeah, the, the Hyrule Hyrule books the Hyrule that Hyrule books have like books, canon yeah. inaccuracies or some yeah. shit like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the Final Fantasy VII Ultimania, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, perfect. 
<laughs> uh, Phil, what about Pikmin? Do you like Pikmin? Where would you want to see Pikmin cross over, though? Do I like Pikmin? I feel Pikmin is like Sonic to me as well. Okay, it's it's gotcha. it's almost like they're they're there. They're fun. They're very fun in Smash Bros to use with Olimar. Um, Bronx Zoo, because I'm on the East Coast here. Okay, put them in the Bronx Zoo. Put them in the Bronx Zoo. Cool, yeah. That'd be awesome. All right, let's end the show with some questions from our audience. If you want to send in a question here, we put up this thread. Uh, every other Sunday, I put up a thread right now asking for your submissions so you can send in questions here and comments and all that good stuff. Head on over to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. That's where we do it. All right, this first question is from Rakaz. Hey, puncher uppers. What future do you see for Amiibo? I don't collect every Amiibo, but I have the full Smash Bros set, Shovel Knight set, and some individuals I really wanted. I would love it if the Switch 2 revitalizes Amiibo, but also I wonder if it would be a good time to break away from Amiibo. Just want your opinion. Have a great one. All right, Phil, let's start with you, dude. All right. Amiibo. Well, I mean, we I just used my Amiibo in Zelda. I mean, yeah. Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a use for it in the game. Well, it screw every other Amiibo, right? Because only the Zelda ones worked in this one. So if you yeah. own anything <laughs> else, you don't even get... And, and the crazy part is the only things you got in Echoes was a bunch of ingredients and then three different sets. Like, or if you had a Zelda Amiibo, uh, a Ganon Amiibo, and a Link Amiibo, you get like the three outfits that are variations uh, at the midpoint of the game. I feel like there needs to be uses for Amiibo. I don't think I've sure. only seen like the majority of uses in Smash and in Zelda games, right? And I feel uh-huh. like the bonuses for these don't exist anywhere else. We have Pokemon Amiibos. If I scan a Charizard in a Switch game, give me a Charmander egg. You know what I mean? An egg would be nice. Um, we need more utility for Amiibos. I think they're a very cool Nintendo collection piece. Um, the fact that they carry data on it, the fact that they represent their games, even the collaborations we have, I think they should all have their uses. And I think games should all try to incorporate Amiibos somehow in it to mm-hmm. keep that alive. Yeah, I think Amiibo integration games is interesting and can be really cool. Like I liked, so Tears of the Kingdom is the ideal way to do it for me is mm-hmm. the sense that you can use the Amiibo to get these items. However, they're still in the game. Even if you don't have the Amiibo, you can still just go out and get them. Because I remember Breath of the Wild, I was so annoyed because I was like, well, I can't get this tunic because I don't have this damn Amiibo or anything like that in the game. So I got to spend $12 or whatever to get this Amiibo. Granted, the Amiibos look cool and I did buy many of them, so it worked. But that is the way ideal way for them to do it for me. Uh, Micah, Amiibo. What are you thinking? Yeah. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Amiibo and I've collected many of them. I haven't used one, though, for functionality purposes in years. I don't need them to be the little gadgets. Uh, I am perfectly content with them just being little figurines. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish Nintendo would just continue to make them like expand the world of Nintendo line of figures, which you can find like at Target, for example, really easily. And I collect those, too. And just keep making high quality, affordable figures. But I don't personally need them to do anything because a lot of times it is just cosmetics. And it's like, I don't really want to go through a hassle of scanning this thing in to get a shirt. I, I just I'm collecting them because they look cool. They're affordable, high quality figures like the Joker Amiibo that I have is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Like it's a really great little figure. And it's just um, Min Min from Arms is another one that they did really well. Like that's a fucking like amazing little figure for such an affordable price. But I'd be perfectly content if they just made more World of Nintendo figures uh, of their characters and just made more of those and kept expanding that lineup. But otherwise, they don't have to do anything. I'm really cool with them just hanging out on my shelf. So they mm-hmm. could get rid of the functionality and I would still just buy their little figurines yeah gene what about you dude uh yeah i i have a bunch of amiibo uh i i i I collect a ton of them i don't know if i've gotten every single one but i bought a bunch of them i bought all the recent ones i bought i have kazia i have sephiroth i have uh the new splatoon ones Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i keep buying them and i was bummed that zelda echoes zelda zelda didn't get one 
because I think I yeah. think we deserve right. We deserve we, we we deserve a Zelda Echoes one. It would be it would be so fucking cute with her tri rod, right? Mm-hmm. Her warm little tri rod, Micah. Um, <laughs> But but yeah, imagine imagine they're like like I wonder if they could like have the little triangles like floating around her like if, if oh, they can figure cool. that out somehow or whatever you know yeah um, that would be really cool. But uh, or, or if she's just fucking standing there, that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I I I could give or take amiibo. Um, I I think they don't need to keep making them over and over again. But I like whenever they get a new game and whenever whenever there's a new character, there's an amiibo, amiibo to go with it. I I'll, I'll, I'll just get it with that and i kind of like what they're doing where you just, you just kind of get it alongside of it and there's, mm-hmm. there's like you know that that whole rush to, to fucking kill each other to get them in the in the in the late 2010s you know uh you know i i i don't want to repeat that you know the, the, the early smash uh, uh yeah. rush, right um yeah, yeah. so i don't know i don't know it's okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, give her give her a take I, I i feel like i have enough amiibo you know yeah i have um, enough too yeah, and it's not like Nintendo is like Nintendo still makes new IP, but it's not like they're pumping out like new IP like every every year or whatever. So mm-hmm. I think I think we're okay in this regard. I think I think we could put a pause on Amiibo for now for sure. Yeah, I used to get like all the Zelda ones I would buy immediately, mm-hmm. but I've definitely gotten to the point where I'm like, eh, it's, don't really need these. I until they make a figure that I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like they made the Belmonts from Smash. And I was like, well, I have to buy Simon and Richter. I exactly. have to get those yeah. two right there. So they get me there. But yeah, I wonder if they're just going to slow down on that kind of stuff. It, it feels like they've been slowing down an Amiibo. But totally. yeah, I wonder where they'll go from the future. Yeah, when the 3DS was still hot, then that, that was when that was when they were pumping out Amiibos like crazy. You know? <sighs> yeah. Every yeah. other direct, right? They kept announcing new ones. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. That, it, it was breathless. Like you, could, you just couldn't collect, like, collect them all. You it's know? impossible. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it, crazy. Yeah, it was awful. It was it, it actually like 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 I'm feeling short of breath thinking about that about that period of time. I fucking hated it because like, I really wanted that shit. But then but then but then you you knew you knew you had to fight for it somehow. You know, it's it had to. It was a, it's a rough rough time back then to be yeah an amiibo yeah. collector. Yeah, yeah. It was. And, and I and I, and I bought a lot of like the rarer ones. Uh, and and I paid I, I would pay marked up prices for them. So yeah, actually yeah, no f- fuck the amiibo. Yeah, don't make any more, please. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want this like, shit anymore. Now's the okay. time, guys. Was, Buy now. They're all low. No one cares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make the Zelda the Echoes one. Make that the last one. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, we can we, we can move on. It's like the frustration with Amiibo early on was like, oh, you find out the Sonic Amiibo is rare. And suddenly I'm clamoring to buy a Sonic Amiibo, which yeah. I otherwise wouldn't want. But you God got me you. just on the, you because told me rare. it was rare. And now I want it. It's like, here we are wrestling for a Sonic figure, a little, wow. little Sonic. It's like crazy the that they time, had that much power. Yeah. The only time Sonic was hard to get was the Amiibo, not the games, guys. Yeah. <laughs> full circle on this <laughs> but I think like the Donkey Kong one is actually still rare too. And I, and I actually don't have that one. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, huh. Donkey Kong. Yeah, I don't think I've that. even seen well, that. As long as they don't make a new Donkey Kong game that Donkey Kong oh, unlocks my... a uh, certain weapon or outfit. Oh, here yeah. we go. Twenty four dollars on Amazon. I guess I'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, yeah. I, sure. I just bought it. I just bought it. Yeah. <laughs> you just no. bought it. You pulled the trigger yeah. so fast. That was awesome. The price is low. Buy now. Yeah. yeah. Gene, if that gets us a new Donkey Kong game, though, keep spending. Oh wait, no, I don't want spending. this one. I don't. I don't want to smash one. Delete. Yeah. The, the, oh, never mind. One. Donkey Kong game's not happening anymore. Yeah. All right. This next question is from Onyx Osprey. Salutations, blistered fisters. I've been oh. really enjoying my first playthrough of Echoes of Wisdom on Hero Mode. After hearing Gene's criticism of the difficulty. A few days ago, I learned that Miyamoto is not listed anywhere in the credits, not even the special thanks. I know that his day of directing and leading game development at Nintendo are over, and he's more focused on the parks, movies, and museums that celebrate his legacy, but do you find it odd that he's not at least credited for creating Zelda? Furthermore, do you think the day can come when he isn't credited in a Mario or Pikmin game? Hmm, strange. Micah, what do you think? Miyamoto, not credited in Zelda, even though he created Zelda. Yeah, it, it seems a little odd to not at least have a blurb that says based on, you know, the characters created by, you know, mm-hmm. type deal. 
but I don't know enough about Japanese business culture to know how is this something where he's saying, no, I didn't work on it, so it's not mine. And he doesn't want to be credited for it. I because. Because, yeah, the very, um, like, my American perspective is to say, yeah, you would absolutely have anything Tom Clancy related. It's going to say, like, based on the characters and world created by Tom Clancy, you know, like mm-hmm. anything Stephen King created is going to say based on the whatever and whatever created by Stephen King. Spider-Man but created I, by Stan Lee, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. But uh, is this a Japanese business culture maneuver that I just don't understand? And he's saying, no, I didn't work on it. So, oh, I don't I don't know. It does seem weird, but that's just me as a average consumer saying, yeah, I, I would expect to see him credited for creating the Zelda world. But I don't know what their customs are regarding things like that. Hmm. That's a good point, Micah. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, to do with it. That, that's a very, very astute point. I didn't even think about that. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Philly? I think uh, worst case scenario, they can push a patch and it gets shown in the <laughs> yeah, they can patch it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the name, they patch it in. Worst case, if enough people notice that and start making a scene online. Do you think we'll get to a point where there's no Miyamoto and Mario credits, though? I mean, that would feel. Like, <sighs> I, I don't think on Mario. <laughs> I don't think on Mario. I think I think I think he's going to have an involvement there all the way. Okay. Yeah, because I like I imagine or Mimoto's involved in the Zelda movie, so I assume his name will be credits there. But yeah, just on a Zelda game is weird, but yeah, I guess if Miyamoto ever is not in a Mario game, that'd feel really weird, but I don't know. I thought we'd always see Miyamoto and Zelda credits, and here we are, but I don't know. Weird times. All right, this last question is from Jared R. Hey, punching up crew. While there's uh, there's been a lot of speculation about the Switch 2 console itself, my mind has been on the implementation of a new weird Nintendo social feature for the console. For me, Nintendo consoles often have been defined by things like PictoChat, Miiverse, StreetPass, Link Cables, etc. These all have had varying degrees of success, of course, but I always love the effort to try something new. Do you think the Switch 2 will have a fun and unique feature like these, or will it be will it be boring like the Switch in this regard? Yeah, what was the was the Wii U one? Um, Meverse, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember Meverse. Yeah, pretty. Mm-hmm. There was some pretty funny stuff on there. It was like that guy talking about water or water, something yeah. constantly. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Um, I kind of do miss a weird thing like that. I do think those are always interesting and funny, even if they're like. Don't, they never work out quite how we're hoping, but there's something special about turning on my Wii U and just seeing all these little weirdos running around and like people's drawings just showing up on their stuff they drew in their gamepad. I always thought that stuff was really cool. But what do you guys think, Phil? Does this matter to you at all? I think these things serve their purpose in their own time, and that's why mm-hmm. we can look back and be nostalgic about it. I feel like in today's world, we're, when we're picking stuff up, we're just going for the game, like what we're typically going for. If, if anything, if they put time and development into stuff like that, we're just like, oh, wow, look at this. This is so cool. And then we stop talking about it the month after the release of it. And then it's it's just this thing they have to kind of develop and keep up and running. Um, and I think it's I think that's just a little extra effort on their part. But mm-hmm. who knows? Right. It's Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> what about Eugene? What do you think? Um, in terms of the social features, I don't know. It's a tough one because I, I, I like the social features. But I never use them, right? Mm. But I feel like I would probably use them a little bit more now. Um, just because, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, a lot, I didn't really play. I wasn't really that into games uh, uh, when, when these social features happen, you know? Like, I wasn't carrying around my Nintendo DS around uh for street pass or whatever you know i was i was again i was out of the clubs i was out getting drunk i was doing drugs you know <laughs> dude bring it to the club yeah i didn't bring the ds to the club or, or anything like that the club. <laughs> yeah but now that i've calmed down like oh cool i would i, I would actually like dive into the meverse and like, like upvote things or whatever like that or like post shit on there or whatever so I would probably use it and I would be wel- welcome it. It also does make me wonder what if the Switch was so good and so successful because Nintendo just didn't bother with any of that shit. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but may, like maybe, maybe Nintendo really locked in and they're like, hey, let's just make some games right now, you know? Mm hmm. Um, and just like not deal with this. So I don't know. May, 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 if, if this was Nintendo locking in and they're like, hey, we should just not, not do it again because like, you know, that shit was very distracting for, for the whole company. Yeah. Then then maybe, you know, uh, the, the, may, maybe the, the, the fact that we didn't get any fucking themes or any kind of theme songs or whatever like that, you know, uh, for the Switch meant that the Switch was so, so good, you know? Yeah. Man, I miss the theme set. songs though. Yeah, I, I miss the theme songs, but maybe it takes all that creative energy to make such fucking good songs, you know? Like the me, channel, the me Channel music is so good and it's it's it still works. But you, they should just fucking bring that shit back then. They should just bring yeah. it back, you know? Just they bring the just, Wii Shop music back. You can yeah, just bring the Wii Shop music back, bring the Me Channel music back, bring the Meverse yeah. music back. Just reuse it again. Just maybe, you know, just to remix it like you're Akira Yamoka yeah. you're doing Silent Hill mm. music all over and over again. Exactly, you know? yeah. Just, just, just remix it and and just do that. So I don't know. Micah, what about any of these social features? Do you want to see any of them come back, or do you want something new, or just leave it out? Yeah, I'm really cool with them not bringing this back. Uh, the only time I really utilized Street Pass, for example, was I would always bring my 3DS to PAX East when I went every year, and you are just in proximity to so many people who have them. Do I even remember what the little rewards were? No. I don't remember why I was doing this. I don't remember, but I'd be checking it at the end of the day and be like, oh, I got something for walking mm -hmm. by 10 people with a 3DS. I don't even remember what it was for. So the nostalgia is there because it was pretty fun, but I don't even see myself like, yeah, the Switch. I'm going to bring the Switch with me everywhere I go and hope I walk by somebody else who has one. It was a neat concept, and with the 3DS, it was like, okay, well, this works once a year when I'm surrounded by gamers, but otherwise, I just don't really get to use this at all. But what was, was it on, like, PlayStation 3 that they had the, like, Second Home? Life <laughs> little... Home. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, maybe they bring back something like that, but again, as Philly mentioned, is it just the nostalgia talking, or will we actually enjoy this again? <laughs> Are we looking back at this because it was innovative and different at the time, but would we actually want to play it now? There's so many people mm. like bring back PlayStation Home, but it's like, but do you really want it? Are you really going to spend hours in here uh, chatting to random people online? Are you really? So I'm cool with them not doing more like social aspect things like that because. I really didn't get much use out of it in the first place. And I'm even more of a hermit now. So if you introduce Street Pass or something, oh, I am probably only would get any points at our own live shows, for example. That's the only time I'm surrounded by gamers these days. <laughs> yeah, I guess like I, I limit more of the music we we're talking about with Gene, I guess. That's what I want the most. Give me nice menu music back again or something. But the social features are cool, but I probably wouldn't use them honestly that much. But I think it's fun when they try it. But if, it, if it's not there, it's no big deal. It's whatever. All right, guys, that's going to do it. We are done with this episode of Punching Up. Thank you for joining us, Philly. We appreciate it, man. It's great Thanks to have you on here. First of all, I should have mentioned this earlier. He has a very nice background going on there for our video listeners or video <laughs> watchers. You can see he's got a like, nice neon sign of the, the Hylian shield that got Zelda, some Pokemon cards back there, and Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom on his TV. Looking good. Really love that. Awesome stuff. Before we go, though, Philly, let the people know where they can find you. Mm -hmm. and find me on youtube.com slash Philly Beats You. Mm hmm. Cool. So if you want to check out his videos there, please do. So I Gene. Heard, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I heard of Philly uh, because uh, this was during the Tears of the Kingdom coverage because because Philly was covering the shit out of, of, oh, of, of Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, in, in particular, uh, I, 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 it was your videos that clued me into the Infinite Master Sword uh, glitch, right? Um, and uh, I've mentioned this before on a podcast, but I actually have a separate Nintendo Switch OLED, the, 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 the Tears of the Kingdom special edition OLED Switch that has never been online at all. It's never <laughs> connected to the internet, uh, to any Wi-Fi at all. So it is a raw Nintendo Switch. That is so cool. And, and I, ha I have my cartridge of version 1.0 of Tears of the Kingdom right on, right on there. 
uh, <laughs> I just have a save file going right there where uh, like all the glitches are still completely active, oh, cool. all the dupe glitches, and I have like six versions of message not found, the infinite master sword. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I just want extra copies. Well, the the fun thing though is that with the with so there there is a glitch in the in the in the raw dog version of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, where you can raw get an dog. infinite version of the Master Sword by just glitching glitching the the version of the sword that you get at the beginning of the game at the intro, um, and you can actually fuse that thing with different swords or different weapons. It's the Omega Sword. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so I have I have five different swords all fused with like different items, uh, you know, including like the lightning version or whatever like that. So he's just like an absolute god uh, running around <laughs> in, in, in Zelda Tears of Kingdom 1.0 with like a lightning sword, a lightning master sword, a fire master sword, all kinds of shit. So thank you, Philly, uh, for covering the yeah. hell out of that and, and awesome guides. Of course, so that's, thank you. That's how I heard about him. So that's a history. Nice. Uh, Micah, any final words you want to say or should we just get the hell out of here? Oh, yeah. No, let, let's get out. Thanks very much, Philly, for being mm -hmm. on with us. I hope you had fun. And I'm looking forward to tonight. It's the Boston Bruins season opener down Ooh. in Florida. Mm. They're going to play the game and then leave because Hurricane Milton yeah. is coming. <laughs> uh, I was about I to say, down isn't the hurricane like right there? No, not yet. Yeah, it's supposed to hit on Wednesday. So the games tonight, they were pondering canceling it, as, as the rumors say. Mm -hmm. uh, like Tampa Bay Buccaneers had already left. Uh, Tampa because I think they play the Saints next so they have already moved north um, so stay safe everybody in Florida but I'm really hyped for the season opener hockey season's back it's my mm -hmm. favorite time of year uh, so yeah no, a, a great time meeting Philly and I hope you enjoyed your couple hours with us I did thank you all right everybody thank you for listening and watching we greatly appreciate it and we will see you in the next episode take care and have a good one goodbye Punching Up, a Nintendo podcast, is a product of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC, and is proudly recorded in the USA. The show is written and produced by me, Dustin Furman. My co-hosts are Gene Park, Dagan Moriarty, and Micah Watson. The show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. Punching Up, along with the rest of Last Stand Media shows, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest tier, and we're grateful for your kind contributions and generosity to our independent endeavor. Thank you.